Yeah. We should be live now. <laughs> I really probably should fix, come up with a better way to do the intro every time. Right. But... Well, it's, it's, it's YouTube's fault. They don't tell you this stuff. It, right. It's like you have to guess. If you do it exactly when they say it, usually it cuts off the first few seconds. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But for those watching, uh, welcome. This is uh, the podcast we do every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. This is a Nintendo channel. I am Andres Restart, and the other guy, the other cool guy there, is What About Nintendo? His real name is Brandon. My real name yes, is Andres, is. but I hope you could figure that out. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the it's name. In name. It's but uh, in, yeah. Brandon's channel should be linked in the description below. Um, my channel it's is not. here. Yeah. <laughs> but it is there, so don't worry. Um, so make sure to check him out uh, because we're gonna be talking about a lot of Nintendo stuff and he knows his stuff as well And it's gonna be a fun time. So this time we're gonna be talking about is the Super Mario Bros 35th anniversary direct so we got a Mario and Nintendo direct and It was pretty cool. I think uh, we'll be getting into the specifics of that of course But we're also gonna be getting into what this may mean for the rest of 2020 because of course that's what we like talking about here What's gonna happen next? What's going on with Nintendo? What's their plan? So we're gonna be getting to all of that today uh, So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just gonna be kind of focused on that. So I think it's gonna be a good time uh, But yeah. you know before we jump into that Brandon, how has your week been? Uh, it's been good. I've been told that this is Labor Day weekend, but I haven't felt that because I've been mm -hmm. uh, Working all weekend. And you're working tomorrow. I don't get I don't get Monday off. I don't get Monday off. Okay. Nobody does. Um, I mean, unless you already do get Monday off, then we don't, yeah. we don't uh, shut down for that. Yeah. 24 7 Whataburger, so. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm glad you're working, at least. Yeah, it's... yeah. Getting that, getting that money, you know, barely able to pay my rent finally, you know. It's been it's nice. Been nice so. now, now you're living paycheck to paycheck. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm uh, walking home from work now. Um, in the rain today, it, uh, somebody nice stopped and uh, and gave me a ride. A very very nice guy. I don't know who you are, but uh, in the uh, very 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 low chance you're watching this, shout out to you. Uh, I was I was that Warner Burger employee you, you picked up. Now that other guy who looked at me and uh, just made eye contact the entire way as walking in the rain. You can uh, go screw yourself. But uh, yeah, that guy was nice. Uh, he was he was he was nice guy. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry you had to deal with that, Brandon. But uh, uh, for me, uh, what's going on is uh, th this time I decided to bring in my cat's uh, food plate and water plate so he won't be like, hey, I want to get out of the room and eat and drink. So maybe right, right. you, stand right over there, won't be too much part of the show this time around. I'm sure you'll still... Yeah try and cuddle or something to the microphone, but let's just keep it to a you know, minimal amount of that this time, alright? No, so, cuddling. Yeah, but uh, let, let's uh, let's check in with the chat and then we will jump into the thick of things here. So we got a number of people in the chat already. Hello to you all. I'm going to sort of uh, prioritize ads here, unless Brandon you see some interesting uh, questions as well, you know, for sure, point them out. Uh, the Joker. Happy early Labor Day. Hope you're off of work. Will you talk about what the possibilities are with Galaxy 2 missing? Maybe a separate future release? Maybe nothing at all? Um, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, we I can... definitely be talking about that. Yeah, we can talk about that. I mean, that can be our our starting point here because there's not really any focused outline this time around. Uh, I'll just say that I never... Okay, that's wrong. I'm not going to say I never... Like, when the rumor first happened, which I, I want to say was, like, around March? Around then, maybe a little bit after March? It was at, because we got the Nintendo Direct Mini in March. So, yeah, it was maybe was around really the April-May period when these rumors started. Um, and at first, there were there were different reports from different sites. Some sites reported Galaxy 2 was going to be part of it. But 
as the information most places didn't. Most places didn't, and the places that did eventually came out and said that was an error. There was just an assumption on their end. They didn't actually mm -hmm. hear information saying just that. And right. that's the interesting thing you gotta about be, you got to be careful about these rumors because a that, lot of them there's a lot of assumptions. They, they throw their speculation in there. They don't. They don't point they, that. They, out. they don't like, clarify what's the speculation yeah. and what's the the information they heard. So right. with some of those reports, this being a great example, some of them threw in Galaxy Two because from their perspective it just made perfect sense for galaxy 2 to be a part of it but no that that wasn't the case and once that was made clear after about a day or so i was in like okay this is what the report is saying i believe the sources so i'm just gonna believe that and mm -hmm. that that was my expectation so from day two or three my expectation was that it would just be mario 64 sunshine and galaxy and sure enough that's exactly what it was so i wasn't disappointed right. This was exactly what I expected. Now, throughout the you know the year, I definitely had different takes and perspectives, like, like thinking like maybe if like if this is gonna be like Nintendo's big holiday release, maybe if it actually is something that warrants that, they'll put a little bit more work into that. Maybe they'll improve the graphics more, so add new content. But as it turns out, it's something that was announced two weeks in advance, which is sort of unprecedented, I feel, and it's coming out this September, which has implications for other right. things. We'll get into that later. But, you know, it's still a remaster. I still like what 3D All-Stars is. I'm excited about it. We're going to get in more deep into that. But my point is, in terms of Galaxy 2, I just never expected that because we're already getting three games yeah. in one package. Will they eventually I add mean, it? Mm, I'm going to say huh. no. Ugh. I think 3D All-Stars... Like limited release. So. Right, right. Uh, Galaxy 2, I don't think will ever be a part of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And if I'm wrong someday... Great, I would be happy if that if I'm wrong someday. But what may happen, and maybe this could be explaining why Nintendo has a, a limited release plan for this, is that they're gonna have this limited release thing, and then shortly afterwards, once they cut it off, and maybe it won't be that short, maybe it'll be a few months, but I think at some point afterwards they'll have these games available individually, assuming they actually discontinue it digitally. And maybe they at some point throw in Galaxy 2 in that way as well. Maybe. But I think it's like a yeah. best case scenario. It's strange because the original Mario All Stars collection had four games, and it's it's strange if you're gonna do Galaxy. Um, it's, it's an interesting choice not to do Galaxy Two. I understand like they're very similar games, so if you maybe they really just wanted to do three, then it makes sense to put Galaxy One instead of two. But uh, well, here's a crazy idea. Odd. Here's a crazy idea. What if you unlock Galaxy Two? What if the oh. This is, and this is not something I don't, I do not expect this at all. This is just pure, you know, pipe dream speculation here. Mm -hmm. But what if, you know, what we've been presented with 3D All-Stars isn't all there is with 3D All-Stars? What if there is additional new content in there and they haven't shown that to us? Like, what if you can play through Mario 64 and you unlock Luigi? What if you can play through Mario Sunshine and I don't, I don't know what you would unlock with that, but <laughs> I don't know. maybe another level. I don't know, right? And then maybe with uh, with Galaxy One, you play the Galaxy One, you unlock Galaxy Two or something crazy like that. Um, I it'd think be such that's a big unlock. That'd be a huge unlock, uh, or maybe it'd be more like, um, you know, how on, on SNES Classic when you, you have to just play for a little bit and you can unlock uh, Star Fox Two, like maybe it could be something like oh. that. I didn't actually realize that's how it worked. Yeah, you didn't. You don't have access to Star Fox Two immediately. Granted, it was announced. They, like, you knew it was in the package, but they didn't, you know, tell you that. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I, that's I like... I never owned uh, yeah. Arsenius Classic, so I actually never knew that. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, so you don't you don't have it immediately, but you can unlock it in, like, five minutes or something. But um, I think that's possible, but I really, really don't expect that at all. I feel like my, my expectation is what they've told us. It's Mario 64, it's Mario Sunshine, it's Mario Galaxy... But each one has been brought into HD. Now, what that means is that basically they're they're you know, they, they've they've changed around the resolution a little bit depending on the game. Like Mario 64 is in 4x3, but maybe it would look right. better in 4x3, right? Without having to change around the visuals too much. The others are in widescreen 1080p. 
And yeah, I imagine there's like camera issues because there's we've seen other four x three games where the camera like clips into the ground. Yeah. And stuff where like it shows out of level. So it's probably just um, a smarter, simpler way just to do this yeah. because from what you, from what it, we can it tell, it wasn't more work for yeah. Them to, this had a very short to, development to, to time. By nine. They could have made this oh, yeah. game in like two weeks. For sure. Um, <laughs> they probably could have. Yeah. Um, so, but basically, you know, the resolution is higher, and when we, from what I've seen at least, especially with Mario 64, it does look like the textures are a lot cleaner. The HUD is very clear now, it's not a pixely mess. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious what the star statue is going to say uh, behind the castle. I, I, am very I, I think from data well. mines, we now know what it's supposed to say. I think it's supposed to say, um, like, something about a, I don't, I don't remember the exact thing. It's not L is real, just for the record, it's something else. Um, but... But we may be able to see things more like that more clearly, and that's pretty much it. So basically, the textures have been cleaned up a little bit, and right. they're in HD. It, it seems they went back and they took those original assets and swapped them in, which is uh, kind of hit or miss depending on the game. Um, and it seems they mostly did that for Mario 64. The textures seem to be identical in Sunshine and Galaxy, which is fine because uh, they... Yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten well, extended Galaxy looks. Does. Sunshine is iffy, but um, for the most part, like... And then Sunshine, it's like hit or miss, bec or uh, 64, excuse me, is hit or miss because not all of the textures, like the original right. assets, not all of them are actually better. Like some yeah. of them are just like, that's how they were. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, they they do generally look nicer. Like if you look at like coins and like things like that. Like even in Mario sixty four, if you if you emulate that, the coins have like really jagged edges and they're like really low resolution. Right. Um, but in the um, collection, they are much rounded, much more round. Um, and th there's some textures that seem to be cleaned up in in Sunshine Galaxy. For the most part, those already held up fairly mm -hmm. well. So, I mean, I just want to get my hands on it, and then we can have. a a more closer look at it, right? We haven't been able yeah, to like just see like to see a little bit more, yeah, to, to see the full extent. But from what we've seen, at least um, sunshine's in widescreen, like that's good. Yeah, uh, that's a big deal. From what we've seen so far, at least from what people have suggested, I'm not really good at figuring this out myself. But it doesn't seem like they improved the frame rate for 64 they or sunshine. Not. Well, I mean, they probably still improve the frame rate for 64 in terms of it making right, it yeah, steady. It, it runs. It, at a, a 30 fps but the, the it hasn't been pushed there. to 60 right um yeah. which i don't think is necessarily a big deal um and again we don't know for sure we'll see when the game actually comes out it's kind of the same thing with like is there any hidden content in there there might be i wouldn't expect it but right. you know we won't know for sure for sure as, until as we actually get the game where it goes it's it's pretty much for sure i mean you can clearly see that there are okay. 30 frames um, I mean, a simple way for people who want to like, this is a, a trick I use, and it, you're not going to get the exact frame rate from this, but you can pretty much tell if there is a video that's encoded at 60 frames. Now, this is important because a lot of videos are encoded at 30, so even if they run at 60, you're not going to see that. But these are encoded at 60 frames per second. So, if you click through on YouTube, there's a feature. If you hit you either see comma the... or or period, you go each individual frame. So you just look, is it updating every single frame or is it updating every other click? If it's every other click, that's a 30, 30 FPS game. If it's updating every click, that's a 60 so FPS So the way refresh. you know for sure is from what, from what you're telling me is that let's say Nintendo uploads a 1080p 60 FPS video, which means it's mm -hmm. rendering 60 FPS. So you can, you can go every, you can go 60 frames per second, literally, right? Yes. And when you do that, if you click two frames within that 60 second, within that so 60 frames in a second, if it takes two clicks to see the visuals change, that means it's it's running at 30 as opposed to 60, because 60 right. would be every single frame. It is technically putting out 60 frames, but it's doubling But if the game itself, frame. yeah, yeah, if the game to isn't that, yeah. set for that, you're not going to see the change. Uh, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Um, so, yeah, I, from that, I don't expect it at all. Uh, so... That, I mean, but again, I, I think that's fine. Um, I never, I'm 30 frames per second is not a problem for me. A lot of games at 30 frames per second. My favorite game of all time, or second favorite game of all time, is like 20 frames per second. I'm talking about Ocarina of Time, <laughs> and then Breath of the yeah. Wild is not even a, a solid 30 either. Um, no. I mean, these it, 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 these aren't super fast platforming yeah. games. 
and they're kind of built around that 30 fps target this isn't like a racing game or something where you have to be like super super precise like mario has never been so hard of a platforming game that you need 60 fps to really you know get your inputs in there um it would have been nice though i mean we have like 60 fps mods for like the pc community and it, mm -hmm. it looks very nice but it, it's definitely not something that they had to do or something that's really gonna improve your gameplay experience it's just something that would have uh it would have made the games look and feel better yeah yeah so um i'm gonna see if i actually can add shifty to oh shifty him oh i see him he in the chat might, there he is. yeah we might i just have to uh try something here hold on it might be a little tricky for me so, I'm just putting that there while I work on the changes. So, give me a second. I'm working on it. While you're doing that, I'd like to read a, a comment here that, I, that caught my eye. Uh, Gmod, and a bunch of numbers that I'm not going to read, says, I want to be able to play the classic Super Smash Brothers games ranging from 64 to Wii U, although now that I think about it, I think Collection would have been uh, integrated to Ultimate. Why? Well, I don't think I agree with that last part, but uh, I would also love to have a collection of uh, the older Smash games because they do play differently. They're not just, you know, lesser, more content. They, they have different physics and special things towards them and of course i have a huge amount of nostalgia for the smash these for smash these for it, it's it's one of those games where i wouldn't want it to be remade like i want that style you know um it, it's it's one of those few games where I, that that style is part of the nostalgia um so i i would i would like that oddly enough mario 64 is, isn't that for me like i like the nostalgia, but I, I, I would rather remake. Smash is one of those few games where I'm like, nah, nah, keep those low poly, you know? I, I have, uh, you know, my Smash Ultimate where I can play Smash in, in nice graphics. I, I like those low poly. There, there's a little bit of a, a charm to them. C4, though, I don't, I don't know why, but it, it's it's different for me. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's the same for you, but for me, it's a little, it's a little different. <laughs> I'm just figuring this all out. Yep, create new group. All right, I am adding Shifty oh. now. There we go. So, to here. There we there go. He is. Yo, <laughs> yo, what's up, buddy? What's up, guys? How you doing? Sorry if it was weird for me to just jump in in the middle. Well, I, ah, I wanted to see if I before. I wanted to see you if we could. This is, you think we're professional out here? Nah. <laughs> it's cool. Um, I'm. I just... literally like just rushed here immediately. <laughs> Nice, nice. We're all good. I'm just, just trying too hyped to be on the Andres Richter <laughs> podcast, the best podcast in the world. There we go. Exactly. Oh. You can't oh. beat it. How could yeah. you? I... Is Joe Rogan? <laughs> nah, nah. Screw him. <laughs> We're gonna be on Andres Richter oh, podcast. I like Joe Rogan's podcast. Spawn wait. <laughs> nah. Yeah. All right. So needs... I just wanted to adjust everything there. All right. Cool. Oh, yeah, because you got to set it up for three people now. Yeah, yeah, so I have to change the layout. Um, but we're good. It looks all set up here. For those watching, nice. let me know if it's working, if it looks okay. If it doesn't look ridiculous, I'd be appreci I'd appreciate it if you let me know. If it does look ridiculous, also let me know. <laughs> but, um, how you doing, bud? I'm doing... I'm tired being at work okay. all day. Yeah. But you know what? I'm here for this, so I wanted yeah. to be here for this. So uh, I'm glad I made it. <laughs> cool. So um, we were just like, I guess just we'll just jump straight back to what we were talking about. And I guess you can kind of give your thoughts on this part first. Um, we're just kind of talking about like the visual changes of the Mario rematches. Like what's your take, like just from the visual perspective, what we've seen? Uh, it's not the craziest upgrades, but it's nice that they did anything, I guess. Mm -hmm. I... I I like the the high resolution for the newer uh, the Sunshine and Galaxy. I like the widescreen support. Um, 64 looks better, not like a ton better, but it looks better. <laughs> uh, I think it's okay. I, I'm, I'm like kind of indifferent. I think. Yeah. This, yeah. 64 does look uh, lower resolution because not only is it four by three, but 
the vertical resolution, which is not being decreased by the aspect ratio, is also lower for some reason. It's a uh, 4 by 3 7 20p or thereabouts instead of a uh, uh, 4 by 3 1080 and I'm not sure why that is, to be honest. Uh, you can definitely see a lot more aliasing in, in, that, in that game than the other ones. Although none of them have anti-aliasing, so it's, it's they're all shimmery. But I, I did notice that immediately. I actually went and uh, pixel counted them all, and then immediately it was like, why did I do this? Somebody else on Twitter and posted that like five seconds before I was going to, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting. The other ones are actually a, a full 1080p, whereas that uh, CC4 yeah, is but a I'm... 4x3, like 756p or something like that. It, it's... I... <sighs> So I don't know the numbers, but my perspective is that it it's high. It's as high of a resolution resolution you need for four by three. If we're like comparing it to like 1080p, you know what I mean? Like it, it has to be a lower resolution because it's well, it's 1080p smaller. is actually the resolution vertically. So it'd right, be, and 19 uh, by 20 by 1080p. So technically, right. all you're doing is reducing this way. So it would be like. I don't know the exact like S. Like, but the ratio, ratio is like, say, say 1280 yeah. by 1080, but it's not it's like 1280 by 756 or something. I don't think 1280 number is exactly correct, but you get what I mean. It's a lower, it's lower on both scales for some reason. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, um, but I'm not a developer, so there might be a yeah, completely I'm, logical reason to yeah, this that I just um, don't know. It's good enough. I I'm fine with it. It to me it looks clearly it looks better. Better. It looks a yeah. lot better than 240p. It, it's it's like a four times upgrade or something still. Um, yeah. So the it, original resolution. The, the textures are all a lot cleaner, and that's that's fine. Um, I was actually uh, watching um Rob from Rule of Two Review. He's been on the podcast a couple of times. He had a video kind of talking about like the price point. Um, is, is it worth it? Mm. This this sixty dollar package and he he had a good comparison i felt like because it, it was a uh, he brought up how the virtual console um back on the wii n64 games were like 12 to 15 dollars so if we go back a few years ago we i i was i was willing to put down 15 dollars for mario 64 and that was arguably a poorly emulated mario 64 <laughs> So yeah, was, this not is good. not poorly emulated from what we can see, at least. This is an actual remaster by the actual definition of remaster, right. not what people have turned, not, not the new definition for remaster. It's been improved upon uh, yeah. visually, um, I'm going to assume audio-wise as well, and probably, and we know control-wise to some extent, but we don't know the full extent yet. Um, and what's cool about it is that, so if you break it down game by game, $20 per game, right? But each game is a visual enhancement from those old ones we had on Virtual Console. And there's also quality of life updates as well. And then it's all packaged together for 35th anniversary celebrations. So when you break it down like that, I don't really feel like it's a bad price at all. And I'll even say that I remember a lot of people were talking about, at least some people, lot, some people who had asked me their, my thoughts on it uh, over these, these last few months, like, do I, what price do I think this will be? And I've always been like, yeah, I think it's going to be $60 with all three games. A lot of people felt like that, no, Nintendo would have each game sold separately for like $60 or something. But I think maybe that also their expectation was that a remaster would be more like a remake, right? There right? um, would be a lot more work put in yeah. there. Uh, but this is, you know, like for what it is this is kind is, of my initial the, expectation. The, the very technical term of remaster is what yeah. they're going for here. Uh, yeah. T typically, like a lot of people associate remasters with new textures and uh, like Wind Waker HD had a new lighting engine and things like that. Technically, that actually goes into remake because you're remaking assets, even though nobody considers those remakes. Um, it's, it's a very weird gray area. And then nobody agrees on what terms should be used in in these situations, but uh, I mean it, it's, it's it is it's kind of like a spectrum, right? Because like that. if what it, what if they had decided to like put in Wario, like they create a new model for Wario in Mario sixty four and just put it in there to mat, but they made it to look similar, like that would be new. That would be a new asset just thrown in there, right? So they're not remastering mm. anything that's old to make they can't there's no way to remaster something that doesn't exist in the game. But right. if it's only just that and everything else is just 
enhanced from the base original source code or what have you, then it's still mostly a remaster, but with some additional content, right? And right. that's kind of how the spectrum goes. Like, look at Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. To me, you know, like, we've sort of talked about this, and, like, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, I think, is awesome. Uh, it's evident that some of the original, like, assets were sort of enhanced as opposed right. to completely redone. So You can see those polygon you, counts on the environments sometimes, and you're like, eh, I don't but know about that. There's still been so much work done to it that it's definitely yeah. nothing, it's definitely far more than what this is. It's like, I oh, mean, yeah. to me, it, it leans so more on the, on the side of Remake, but it's, you know, it's a spectrum, and that's kind of subjective, I guess, at least from our 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 eyes, like, there probably right. is a number that, that, that can be calculated if you look at the source code to see how much closer it is to full-on remake than remaster. But the point is there is a spectrum here because it comes down to how much the developer has to create that's entirely new versus just improving what was there with the original code, right? Uh, but either way, I mean, I'm I'm okay with this. I, I think it's a good value and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks good. And, and if anything, the whole debate on what counts as a remake or remaster is something that's just as the times went on more and more difficult to pin down what exactly that is I mean, yeah like i remember all the debates with xenoblade and if you even like think about the idea that you brought up where it's just like one specific uh new form of content that's added in that makes me think of like say a game like captain toast treasure tracker or 3d war would it just add one new thing and then they kind of release it or donkey kong would it right. just, it was funky yeah would that count as a remake at that point even though it's a very very recent game it looks more right. or less identical um most and, people and wouldn't call it that call no. it a remake if that's right. new content because you're not remaking the old content you're you're adding new content so what do you even call that so, right yeah at, yeah at that point is what enhanced port is that, is that what i would have yeah called? i guess yeah um, it's, it's a very weird area for, yeah. for me i mean i i already pre-ordered the game it, so I, did I, I. I did it because <laughs> i had it because i had this bad boy uh 53 dollars on on trade credit there that's why i pre-ordered it but honestly i wasn't sure if i was going to because i was like eh, i'll just buy it buy it digitally or if it when i feel like it because I honestly, I was I wasn't even like that excited for him. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it, if you guys have seen my reactions, like Twitter and Discord and stuff, you, you already know I wasn't like super excited for this. I actually think 3D World is a much more hype uh, package, just because it seems to actually add like new stuff and it's it seems to have a lot of work put into it. This I feel like they put like the most minimum work that they could get away with and slapped it in the collection which i mean if you look at their history with with their 3d their other all-stars not 3d all-stars but their other original all-stars collection they also like barely did anything with that except they actually kind of ruined those games because the physics are like way worse i hear i haven't played it but from what i hear um they don't play as well so i'm actually curious that's another thing i'm curious if they will if these games will play correctly but uh, I, I'm honestly not super excited for it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to play Galaxy again and 64 again, but uh, at least for 64, I was hoping for more. Uh, Galaxy looks great. Like, it looks fantastic, even today. In HD, that game looks great. I've been saying that for a while. All you need to do is put that in 1080p. Sunshine holds up pretty well. Uh, some of the textures are a little iffy. That was a very early GameCube game, so it, it, there's there's some, like parts that are rough but for the most part it holds up fine but 64 i was really hoping they'd go in and make that game uh look even slightly decent uh <laughs> I, I i i see that you, you know they show that like part where he comes up the warp pipe that super iconic scene the very beginning of the game he comes yeah. up the warp pipe jumps out you know everybody knows that scene and you just look at that warp pipe and you're like ah oh, it's not even an edge there it's just just a <laughs> texture uh, it's it's that game is rough um i was really hoping for more and i mean there is a charm to it as i was saying before but like i was talking about smash 64 and there's there's a charm to those graphics but mario 64 is uh it's a little more rough than than smash and it's it's i i mean i'm i'm excited to play it again but i was really hoping for more effort especially when you look at like other trilogies we've gone this generation like spyro and crash where they completely remade each game from the ground up for 40 dollars um, I'm like, oh, I'm paying 60 for what's essentially just a, a in like the the very minimum 
basic remaster and I, I don't think it's like terrible i just wouldn't say it's a good price either i think it's a it's a little high i would have liked it if it was 40 or 50. it's it's not the end of the world but it's definitely something i look at and go uh, nintendo is it, this is definitely a nintendo thing and then no yeah. other company could get away with this well, no I mean, and, and, and that's the thing, though. That. It's that price because it's still going to sell well at that price. Right. It's just the <laughs> law of supply and demand. If it was, like, you look at the the Crash and Spiral remakes, you know, they ha obviously had a lot of work done into them. There was a lot of time put into that. But if they didn't do that, would they have sold as well? You know, like, oh, no. the Mario brand just has so much more power. And I'll also say that while Crash and Spyro are great, or, well, maybe not, you know what, I, I'm going to take that back. I'm not going to say great. Good. Those are good games. <laughs> Mario 64 <laughs> and Mario Galaxy are hailed by many as some of the greatest games of all time. I intentionally exclude Sunshine because a lot of people don't believe yeah. that. That's not what if I think. A sunshine, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm I, sorry, but Sunshine's... <laughs> No, no, no. Would, okay, I'm, hold on a second. Hold garbage. on a second, though. No, it is not garbage. No, it is it's not very garbage. Mediocre. It's a very mediocre game. That's it your opinion? A, like it's a me. 6 out of 10 game. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you there. No, I'm, well, with you there. I'm not with either of you. <laughs> it's I, I a great game. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. If you saw my reaction, you already know how I feel about that game. Yeah, well. I, I saw your reaction. It's a very <laughs> nice video, actually. You did good. Thanks. Good. But, uh, yeah, um... I, I have to say, uh, you, you say Spyro and Crash are okay. um, no, 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 no. great. Sorry, I, I, I have to put a pause on this. 64 and Sunshine. Uh, 64. Uh, 64. Let me, let me explain. No, 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 no. For, no, no, no. Crucify me. No, you're already crucified, bud. At the time, 64 did not age very well. You're already crucified. Like, it's still a great game, and it's a lot better it's than over. Sunshine. I'm going to be super excited to play it because nostalgia. But let's be honest, like 64. I'm about to boot you from the call. It was revolutionary, but uh, like it was also a 64 launch title, and it's. it's I'm about not, to blow your mind. Didn't, didn't hold up with the, <laughs> the, the best. See, and Sunshine I, I, is I'm just gonna... the very middle of the road. Galaxy is the only if, oh, like man. 10 Revisionist out of 10. Revisionist history here. here. Sunshine's a little lower than middle of the road, just to, just to say. But yeah. <laughs> the way oh, I look at man. it, your I opinions. have to agree with you. <laughs> I half agree with you, all right? I'll, I'll give you this. Okay. If, if 64 looked better, like if they, you know, kind of, I don't know, redid things, remake it, mm -hmm. essentially, I'd be with you in the sense that the $60 price tag would be easier to swallow. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, although that the, what you mentioned about Smash 64 having that charm, I kind of feel that way for Mario 64 to an extent. A little bit, but Mario 64 right. has issues beyond just its its graphics. I really hope they fix the camera because that was. Um, hmm. Also, its physics are a li little little slippy. I have to say, a little little slippy there. Yeah, I, I can right, see that. Right now, I, I am looking at all the Metacritic <laughs> scores for these games. And I'm just be like, look, you can, I mean, you can, you're entitled to your own personal that opinion. Mario 64 is, is held up. No, 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 I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> no. All right. It, so, it's not as ageless no, no. as, uh, say, Ocarina of Time. I, and I understand that, yeah, but I just, that. I can agree right. To that, yes, I, age. I still love 64 for all of its, all of its forms. A age yeah, I, I mean, is yeah. definitely a factor, but I just want you to hear me out here. Not, not even hear me out, just look at, just look. Okay. Uh, Mario Galaxy, Metacritic score of 97. It's one of the highest reviewed games of all time on Metacritic. That's just Absolutely fact. fantastic. There's no yeah. debate there. Up um, and I think the game has aged pretty well. Mario 64, 94 on Metacritic. Now, a couple, there's a couple asterisks here. One, there was only, at the time, because it came out in 1996, there weren't too many critical reviews, you know, so mm -hmm. I do feel like, you know, smaller sample size, but... Still, Mario 64 is a historic game that kind of set the benchmark yeah. for platforming and just 3D games in general. So, and then still, 3D games came along and okay. they made now, games that are now, without looking it up, but, but without looking it up, what do you think Mario Sunshine is on Metacritic? Oh God! Without looking it up, I, I'll tell you this: I don't care. Hold your hands you up know, in the air. I don't. I don't want you guys. It hold your needs hands. Needs to be a fifty. That's what it needs. It's such a middle of the road. Okay. It's so, just like but tell me what you think it is. Tell me what you think it is. Okay. It's probably think, like in the eighties or nineties. Like eighty. Yeah. What you think people scored it? Not what you personally believe. Okay. 
I'll say people probably gave it 86. high eights. What? I'll say high eights, low nineties. Mm. High eighties, low nineties. I need a smaller eight seven. Eighty-seven. 87. I'm going with eighty-seven. My money's on eighty-seven. Thousand dollars on eighty-seven. Eighty-seven, eighty-nine. Okay. Well, prepare for disappointment, my friends. <laughs> With 61 <laughs> critical reviews, Super Mario Sunshine, which released on August 25th, 2002, has a Metacritic score of 92. So, you both can closer. suck it. You can work closer. <laughs> you work closer. Um, anyway, it's so... Injustice. No, it's not. The game's great. So, <laughs> anyway, um, you know... That's fine. You don't have to like the game. There are games that are like 10.0s that I don't like. Right? I'm not a fan of Grand yeah. Theft Auto, for example. And I, 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 I don't have... Anyone who loves it, you're entitled to loving it. But just not just not for me. It's just that simple. You know, what I think this is a case of, and I felt this way for like other franchises, and I think this is probably just what it is for this particular case, mm. is that we're so used to just having much better games than when we get like a kind of a decent or like just good one. That we tend to just like kind of stomp it into the ground essentially in terms of criticism yeah and i think that could Weird. just be what sunshine is where I... we're still 10 out of 10 games and once we get like a 9 to 8 out of 10 game we just look at it like it's a 5. sunshine's no maybe, maybe you guys are gonna play and be like hey you know it's not as bad as i remember like... I mean, I, I, maybe sunshine for me like <laughs> it has potential it has an amazing art style i love the music I love the setting. I just don't like the missions. I just don't think it's fun to play. Like, I don't think doing the missions are fun. I think well, they're tedious. All right. Maybe I know for a fact that people who've played Sunshine can be like, this level, this level, this level, this level, this level, I hate. Like, they can look at specific things and be like, yep, all these, these suck. But I, I want to point out that one thing that we don't understand the full breadth of yet is the quality of life updates we know there are some we just don't know to what extent okay um and that could make a significant difference um so we'll have to wait and see on that i think and i do feel like you know nintendo would have adjusted sunshine a little bit to what extent obviously we won't know for sure and obviously well not obviously but i think most people would agree that it doesn't look like Nintendo put that much effort into this. But, you know, maybe they, they kept it very close to the original, uh, you know, visuals. But they did put more effort into how the games feel and how they play. I would, I would love that. Because uh, 64 and Sunshine both need a little bit of work. So One thing that I've seen, Sunshine, but... and if anyone in the chat has any more idea on this or if you guys know, let me know. Um... But I noticed during the initial trailer, during the direct, that Mario Sunshine, there was a shot where I saw Mario in what appeared to be in one of the Shadow Mario levels, and he had Flood. Now, the thing about the Shadow Mario levels in Sunshine was that mm -hmm. the whole idea behind them is that Shadow Mario steals Flood away from you, and you're forced to platform without Flood as a crutch. But I saw Flood in there. So I'm curious, is that just a level that I'm forgetting that has that? Or is there something else there that has been changed? I don't remember any levels having Flood. I'm going back and trying to yeah. look at the original. Yeah, take a look. There, there is a shot of that. Um, and maybe right. maybe it's just me uh, misinterpreting the background. Um, but I saw something that looked that didn't quite match up I'm to what I remember. The trailer. Hmm. I, I'll just try and catch up with the chat here. Yeah, yeah. Captain Rex, I've been thinking about Pikmin and maybe Nintendo will release with one and two as a duo. Maybe it took up too much space in Pikmin 3 Deluxe cartridges. What do you think of that? I think Nintendo never intended on putting Pikmin 1 and 2 in the package. And I do not expect Pikmin 1 and 2 anytime soon. Uh, I know that may sound rough. Um, it doesn't mean they won't happen. I just don't expect them. I don't think they're on the horizon is what I'm saying. Uh, but could they come as a collection sometime down the road? Maybe. Um... It's hard to say for sure. I do think well, at some point we will see a re-release for them. I just I can't really put my finger on when. I I, I don't mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect it anytime too soon. So so I'm looking at the trailer and there are actually two separate levels that are those um, Shadow Mario levels where he has 
flood. And can you I'm can you are you, are you in the um trailer or are you in the direct? So maybe I can show everyone on I, the stream. I'm in the trailer here. Can I share my screen? Hang on, I'm seeing someone in the chat. Um, a moderator, uh, Vooper. Uh, yeah. Or, right. Yeah. Vooper. Uh, Saying that the secret levels were available with Flood after completing them floodless, and they turned into red coin levels. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I never 100%ed like, Sunshine, so... In my defense, like, I blocked out a lot of Sunshine out of my memory. Okay, apparently I have to do a separate window, because that makes sense. Yeah, so undo it, because I don't have the layout for that. Yeah. Yeah. Me... Just tell me yeah. where to look, and I can put. I can go um... to the trailer. One minute, the one minute mark. So I have to go to the 3D the All Stars trailer. Announcement trailer. The Super Mario 3D All Stars announcement trailer. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'm gonna put that up for you. And um, I don't, I don't see red coins. Um. Okay. Just looks like the normal. Let machine. me turn off the. But oh, I'm sure it's gonna have some audio here. There might be a red coin mission, there's just no coins on screen. There's like two seconds of, of clip for each level, so... Okay. So you said about a one minute in? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's like not... Apparently it's hard to, to stream a video. So we're on sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, right there is one shot. Can you guys see it on stream? Is that clear? Yeah. There's oh. a second one right after it of a different level. With and like egg looking platforms. I don't see any red coins. None. No, that's what I was saying. Yeah, None at all. Red coins. So, I mean, I think this kind of goes... Assuming there aren't that these aren't the red coin levels, right? Um, this kind of just goes to show my point that maybe these games have more quality of life changes or just adjustments than well you know right. we're expecting I mean, it's here possible. because there's a lot of changes strange. to like say 3d world that weren't in the direct mm -hmm. like online multiplayer and things like that and the fact that the games like actually play faster like your character runs faster in the game and yeah. things like that so so yeah maybe they did change up the physics or add new like different things to the levels or different options for them or I don't know. This could just be the red coin levels. So, and it's just no so red coins yeah. So Vooper's saying the red coins didn't appear until you ground pounded a red button. So I mean, I I do seem to recall this actually, but I'm not. It, it seems like they're through the, like halfway into the level though. So I, I I believe you did that in, like the beginning. Okay. So I mean, maybe maybe these hmm. are just the red coin levels. I have no idea. I imagine that's probably what it is. Probably just the red coin levels. There's no red coins on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so maybe that's just what it is. Um, but, you know. You do get to see a little bit of those nice, uh, higher resolution assets, though. Uh, the uh, textures definitely look. I, nice I think the game looks that. clean. It looks clean. I'm, I'm pretty excited to play through this. Uh, I probably will. I don't know which one to play first. Like, I think I might just go in order. But I, I, I kind of, yeah. I don't know. Like, I've been really, have, ha, I've had this itch to play through Sunshine for such a long time because it's been a while. I, I want to try it again and see if they make it any more enjoyable because um, I also did emulate the game, so I don't know. Maybe that had a little bit to do with it, but emulation these days is actually really good, so I have no idea. Mm. I plan on going in order, mostly because I love 64, so I'm just I just kind of want to play it again. That's I also feel like you probably 100 percent in like six hours. Yeah, so it's not yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I know you can't really speed run this version because it's based off the uh, the Japanese version. Yeah, it is. Interesting. What does that mean? So basically, the Japanese version is kind of like a a fixed version, I guess you could say, of some of the glitches that were very popular. In they take out the line that that makes him uh, sound like he's being homophobic. <laughs> They they took that they they, they, they took that like, as well. YouTube targets certain words, but yeah, and that super speed reverse jump thing that Mario does in speedruns. Oh like, yeah, so so you can't there. skip the staircase of endlessness. Right. Okay. Yeah. So certain speedrun tricks won't work in this version, because uh, it's based on that one. 
uh, other than that, though, I'm not really a speedrunner anyways, so I'm probably just going to play the game just how it was. Uh, Mario Sunshine, I'm going to play it. I'm going to give it a chance. You know, I'm not really big on Sunshine, but the last time I played Sunshine was when it initially released on the GameCube when I was like a small child. So maybe I was just a dumb kid who didn't really understand what I was doing, you know? So maybe I'll give it another chance as an adult and maybe I'll find some kind of charm to it that I didn't find back then. And Galaxy is probably the one I'm the most excited to actually play because I think it's the one that, yeah, like I love it, not as much as 64, but I love it a lot. And seeing how much better it looks with these, I'm I'm excited. I think I think Galaxy is it's just going to look the best with with an HD because it, it is, like yeah, we've seen the dolphin uh, mods of it, not mods, but dolphin emulations of it. And it just looks incredible. So I'm very excited to play through yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, we saw yeah. the uh, the official NVIDIA Shield version, which I actually was very curious if, the, if this version looks any better. And to be honest, it doesn't. It looks exactly the same. In fact, the, the Shield port actually has better draw distance, oddly enough. Like when you're blasting from planet to planet, things deload from the planets like a little bit uh, faster on, on the official, like, collection version oddly enough which isn't a big deal you're not really looking at that planet anyways but uh, i did i did notice that there's actually like some things that are worse than the uh, nvidia shield port which is odd but for the most part it's it's pretty much exactly the same except you have the correct button prompts instead of the so one interesting thing that i'm seeing prompts. uh haruhi uh, suzumiya point out is that they added a rumble pack so this is gonna be yeah they did add rumble. rumble yeah I like me I, I some don't rumble. Know if it's HD rumble or just normal rumble, but um, I'm I, 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 there's that. gonna be some feedback. So I I like the I like physical feedback when I play games. So I, I think that's it's something nice. I never really experienced in SD4 because I didn't have the I didn't have enough AA batteries. I don't even know if it was compatible with Marcy. I don't I'm not sure. Um, it may have been, but uh, yeah, I, I I want to see this for sure. I want to I want to play this. The only game I remember using it back then was DK64, but I they probably used it. And maybe it was just before. No, I think I, I think there was more. Um, but Donkey Kong was one of the later games. It had the RAM expansion, yeah. for example. Uh, so, because uh, as a kid, I just don't remember much in terms of the hardware Rumble side pack, of Rumble Pack so compatible. I, just, I remember having to get the the expansion slot when yeah. DK64. Like that, I, I remember, remember seeing. I saw a trailer that. for that in the <laughs> movies, and they're like, "Oh, this game is so powerful. You need a rum. You need the expansion pack to play it." <laughs> See, it's my yeah. thing is like, I, I, I was so young. I didn't even know the expansion pack was a thing until I was like seventeen. Somebody was like, "Oh yeah, the expansion pack." I was like, "There was an expansion pack. I had this because I had Dark Kong C four and I played it. So obviously, I had the expansion pack." I just didn't realize that that didn't come with the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember being a kid, dude, and getting DK64, and as a kid, just crying because I couldn't play the game because I didn't have a... Oh. Uh, 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 whatever it was called, I forgot the expansion uh, pack. Yeah. And it was weird. Like, I didn't know it existed until suddenly I put it in the cartridge and the, it had, like, a floating version of the... Uh, yeah. The expand that actual UI. That's interesting. Yeah, and it was like, oh, you, this is required or something. I was like, damn. <laughs> and yeah. That was really depressing. There were the some games it that had limited. Looking back at systems and remembering that they didn't used to have UIs. You just plugged the game in and then they uh they loaded. That yeah. That's all that happened. I remember um Perfect Dark. You could still play the game without the expansion pack. You just didn't have access to the whole game, just like a piece of it, hmm. which is interesting. Um, but I, I'm looking at this list of uh, Rumble Pack compatible games. There's a whole bunch of them, but according to this list, Mario 64 is not one of them. And it was Mario 64 was one of the mm -hmm. first games, which doesn't surprise you. They didn't have patches right. back then, so yeah. yeah. Ocarina of Time did apparently have have compatibility with it though. Ah. Yeah. I never got to experience that. Yeah. It's yeah. There was even like this weird feature um, where like you could like it would rumble and then give you signs of where to go. I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it was... That would have helped a lot when I didn't, uh, my, mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't, uh, get sound to work through my CRT back in the day, so I had to just wander through the Lost Woods and hope to find my way. Man, the audio was so important in Mario 64. I mean, I mean, in Ocarina of Time, all games, but in Ocarina of Time, like, yeah. when you would hit things, you there was, like, a spatial it. audio to it. Yeah, especially for the, yeah, exactly, the Lost Woods, like, you just kind of have to guess then at that point. Uh, Birdman added me asking how the hell do you pixel count a game 
I don't know. Uh, uh, Brandon might so, know. So, um, I'm not gonna explain it because it's way too complicated to explain here. And it is, uh, without actually seeing what I'm talking about, it's really hard to understand what I'm saying. But Digital Foundry, which is how I learned how to do it, has an amazing video, so check their channel out. You can look it up, like, how to pixel count a game, Digital Foundry, or Poly Show. Yeah. And they have a great video that teaches you all about, and I use it pretty much any time a trailer yeah. drops, so I can see the resolution. I, I actually have a method as well. Um, it's separate from what Brandon's talking about. It Usually what I do to figure out the pixel count is I Google it. <laughs> and then uh, you get, like, three different answers from people yeah, who don't agree. Maybe. <laughs> Um, yeah, if Google doesn't tell me in big letters, I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. It doesn't have a resolution. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah, and actually, yeah, thank you, Haruhi. The Stone of Agony was that feature with the Rumble Pack that kind of gave you hints on things. Uh, I never used it myself back then. I don't remember what the Stone of Agony is. It's something they replaced in, in the remakes on 3DS. But uh, let's, let's kind of move on a little bit here. I mean, I'm, I, we can go back to 3D All-Stars all we want, um, but I just kind of want to go through some of the other announcements. We are going to come back to this just because I feel like there's there is still more to talk about in terms of what it implies for the rest of the year and stuff. But I guess mm -hmm. on final thoughts on this package, are you how excited are you about it? Like, I'm, I wish it was out now. <laughs> I want my, it now. My hype levels, let's put it this way. I bought the game physically so I could play it and then resell it for more when they stopped manufacturing the game. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just being honest. Like, it's going to be a nice time, but they really didn't put enough yeah. work in there for me to be hyped about it. Okay. It's just a, a, a nice thing. Like, I could have emulated these games and gotten pretty much the same experience, minus, like, higher resolution UI and a, a few assets that look better. Like, honestly, I could have played Mario 64 on widescreen at 1440p. But how? But you wouldn't be able to play on it on your PC. Switch. It wouldn't no, be portable. But, uh, I'm a. I'm a strictly console like like a uh, tv gamer for the most part so the, for me personally i understand that's a big deal for some people or a lot of people who on the switch but for me nah if nintendo had released a home console i would have been more excited is there are there any the commercials of people playing switch on a toilet <laughs> i think there are in the uk okay i think that's actually a thing that did in the uk i've seen them so you, you won't be able to play Mario 64 on your Switch in the bathroom. So, mm. or by, by emulation. But anyway, <laughs> Shifty, what Unless do you, you think? Your and by the way, guys, um, <laughs> I did add Shifty's, uh, the link to his channel is also in the description below as well, so make sure to check him out. Um, but, yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts on this overall before we move on? I want to say it's more, I think it's more positive than Brandon's. I would say that much. Um, but not by a, a lot. Now, like, I'm mostly excited to play Galaxy. Because yeah. I have played 64, like, a million times. Mm. So it feels kind of like the 3D version of a Super Mario World port, where it's like, oh, I'm happy to play it again, sure. And it looks better. Not by much, but it's there. <laughs> like, I like it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Galaxy is really the one that's like, okay, this makes me want to buy it. Like, yeah. this, that's yeah. what makes me want to play it and buy it. So I'm glad Galaxy's there. And sunshine, I'll give it a chance. <laughs> Disclaimer, I though, I don't play my Switch in the bathroom. Just putting that out there. <laughs> but um, if you play your Switch in the bathroom, clean it. Same thing with your phone. Yeah. Don't yeah. Clean your phones, people. They're dirtier than you think. Yeah. Clean your Switch, please. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I do. I do stage. like cuddling up in my bed, um, and just kind of playing Switch that way, or just like lounging around the house and playing like that that's a cool thing to me and obviously being able to take it to places and play it like that is also great yeah, so i use i use my switch portably a lot do i it's for me it's like a 50 50 deal uh so you know always like just having a game in portable form is awesome so you know that is always like a bit of a selling point to me anyway i'm how really go, go on how comfortable, how comfortable do you think playing portably on galaxy will be uh, See, actually, yeah. that that's an interesting question because I'm still not clear on what's going on with that in terms so, of controls. There was an interview that um, sort of clarified this, and I forget where it was from, but they, they talked to the devs, and essentially the game is supported, they said, in um, obviously on docked mode, 
um, with in you... handheld mode with the touch screen and with tabletop mode with the Joy-Con separate. Now, I think, uh, in my opinion, that they'll have a, another mode for the Pro Controller. Um, I don't think that it won't be supported. Um, I still feel like I can't just use the analog stick. Use... Yeah, because that's what they did on the NVIDIA Shield yeah. port. They just had it mapped to the right analog stick. And if you don't do that, then the right analog stick will literally do nothing because it didn't exist on the Wii. So I don't see why you wouldn't allow that to happen. So. See, because I read an article saying that they might use the touch screen as a replacement. They did. That That yeah. is one of the methods. I'm that okay with that as an alternative, playing, but I, I would rather just be on the controller. If you're playing with stick. it on your Switch like this, then you can touch, which sounds great, actually. No, because you have to like press buttons. Super... Why can I not? Unless, the tri unless you can jump with the triggers, I, I actually don't like the sound of that. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it, it would be nice if it was an option, like in the controls section or something, where you could yeah. have it pointer set to the right stick or to the touchscreen or whatever you prefer. Yeah. Uh, I imagined I'll let you do it on the right stick because I don't, I don't see why not. Yeah. So I'm, I'm reading. This, so this is what I'm reading here. Super, patch for that. Super Mario Galaxy support in TV, tabletop, and handheld modes. In TV mm -hmm. and tabletop modes, motion controls are required for pointer functionality. Meaning there's no ad that what that means is there's no analog control for the pointer. Um, right. In handheld so mode, pointer it's... function has, uh, has been adapted to use a touch screen. See, that, so how can user how, so how do you how do you use your pro controller then? Work. But no, but how do you use your pro controller? That's the you, thing. Oh, no, you can't. can't. You, so okay, oh, the, I guess well, the confusing I thing here is that they say Nintendo exactly. confirmed that 3D All Star supports the Switch Pro controller, but I guess yeah, not for Galaxy. Yeah. Oh my god, Nintendo, why do you do? I mean, eh, See, now I can't even, yeah. can I even play this game? Because my, both my Joy-Con sets drift. So am fix I gonna em. have to pay $80 now for new Joy-Cons just, just to play Galaxy? You can fix them for like 7 bucks. like, 100% primarily portable. Because yeah, I don't want to- me, I won't, though, like. Because it, your Joy-Cons don't work. Yeah, I guess yeah. I'll have to now. Yeah, have to it, see, I'll say that's that's something that bothers me. I feel like the analog stick should have been something they should add. Uh, yeah, they, so. they, they have it on the NVIDIA Shield. They, like, I don't know if they published it or whatever, but yeah. they officially sponsored that port to the Shield, which controlled like that. Mm -hmm. So why not use that same exact control scheme for the Pro Controller in your more, even more official collection? Like, why would you... Who decided, it, uh, who decided did, this? The Nintendo themselves say that oh, Galaxy. Oh, actually, um, yeah, I see a, a chronic, uh, chronic calico, or I hope I didn't get your name wrong. Chronically Cal. Um, doesn't the Pro Controller have gyro controls? Yeah. Jo Joy Cons don't have so an iron pointer either. So I mean, I guess. Work with that too. So maybe, maybe you can use that. Um, and that would be fine. I'll be okay with that. Uh, I'd be fine. With that. I hope that's the case. Well. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that's that that's what's going on there. Uh, fingers crossed, okay. that's what it is. Because uh, I'll, I'll settle for I that. I prefer that to the yeah separate. Even if my joy cons yeah, did, it, it might even feel better than using an analog stick to move around the cursor. I just oh, it sure it certainly would. Yeah, because like if you if you ever played games where they force you to like like PC like games that are on console yeah. that are originally on PC where the menus are like with a mouse cursor, but you have to use the right stick. Oh, they're so sluggish and terrible. They're horrible. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine it'd be pretty much the same. It wouldn't be great. So that having the gyro controls, I mean, like, it's it's, it's yeah, the so, same I mean, as aiming in Splatoon. So I don't see why not. Let me just pro controller. I just want to see if there's any yeah, articles exactly specifically over. talk about pro controller use in 3D All Stars because I I just want confirmation that you can I, use I emotion controls on a pro have, controller. Like, images of like what's support and what's not like the game oddly like, enough game crew controller support is not for sunshine it doesn't support the analog triggers of the game controller that's it just doesn't it's so weird <laughs> i don't understand why you can't play it with the original control scheme with the original controller like who made who made this decision who at nintendo was like nah we ain't supporting the original control scheme that we have that works with the switch and we're not gonna <laughs> I bet all the people who bought those third-party like replicas of GameCube controllers are gonna be really happy with that. 
Like, ah, see, my decision was valid. <laughs> and to be exactly. fair, it was because barely any games use those. Yeah, it's just Smash, isn't it? Or is there another game game that uses game controllers? It'd be but nice they... if racing games actually supported it, but I doubt the developers actually took that into account. Because <laughs> technically, the game controllers do work on other games, but they're like kind of... Yeah, they just work like a too. pro controller, essentially. Right, yeah. Which just with not as many buttons, so you, you yeah. don't have the, the left bumper. Yeah, yeah so... You're... I'll say that um, right we don't, I mean, it's from what I can see, I, I've looked at multiple articles here, there's nothing that clarifies for sure if the, like, it, people, what we do know is a pro controller supported, I just hope that means it's supported for all three games. It would be dumb if it wasn't, so, you know, yeah. maybe it does use, I mean, it probably does use job controls, I'm probably just jumping to negative conclusions here, it's probably fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is so. from an interview, so it's like, yeah, it's official, but it's not because, like, you know, yeah, how yeah. Right. But uh, let's move a little bit uh, forward because there's still a lot of things to talk about here. So, 3D World Deluxe, Super Mario 3D World Deluxe. It's not even being called that actually. It's being called Super, Super Mario, Mario 3D, 3D World, World Plus, Plus Bowser Fury. Fury. Uh, very interesting to me for several reasons. There's a lot of reasons here. Um, but let's first just talk about the game and its changes. 3D, 3D World is my least favorite 3D Mario game, even though I have 100%ed it. Uh, of all the 3D mm -hmm. Mario games, the only one I haven't 100%ed is actually Sunshine. But the only reason I haven't 100%ed Sunshine is because the last time I played it was as a kid on GameCube. Yeah. So I, to be honest, I, yeah. I haven't 100 percented any of the Mario games, but I don't typically understand yeah. games, and those, I haven't played any of them um, since I was like owned them back in the day right. on the original system. So yeah, the reason I bring that up is not to show off; it's just to clarify <laughs> that that I like 3D World. It's just if I had to rank them all, it is my least favorite. Um, but I, I'll say that and <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on. All right. Uh, I mean. That's awesome. Awesome. What do you mean? I didn't say anything. All right. Anyway, anyway, um, you know, I didn't plan on buying this. I knew it was coming. I just didn't plan on buying it because I 100 percented it already, and I got it for 20 bucks on my Wii U. Um, right. But Brandon, you were you were talking to me about it, you know, a couple days ago, and from what we've seen so far, the game has online co-op. The visuals have been noticeably improved. Uh, it looks like the resolution is higher, and there's some things that are being rendered a little bit better. Like uh, apparently, like Peach's lashes are actually rendered now. Which is interesting. Um, on top of that, the game is running faster, or not the game, but like the characters, like right. it plays faster. The character movement yeah, is like twenty percent faster. Side by side, the, it, you you can see that the characters' speeds have been rapidly increased, and there's uh, there's actually even new moves in the game. Um, there's there's yeah. a uh, dive without the cat suit. Now it's not as big of a dive, but it can definitely get you out of some situations. It, it's some it goes subtle straight into a roll. So it, it actually is a super nice move. Yeah, so I would say these are some significant quality of life changes in terms of the yeah. gameplay. Uh, like the games and, are gonna play a little differently now because of it. The the camera itself has been adjusted as well. Like the camera positioning has been, uh, I forget if it was zoomed out or it, it, it focuses on it the It seems to be a little bit more dynamic. Before. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's a better, more dynamic camera. So you, you get it, less of those times where the camera is like not following you all the way. Yeah, and it does seem to be a little bit more visually pleasing too. Um, yeah. So all of that, plus Bowser's Fury, and there may be more content that's hidden there. Like maybe there's an additional character or something or difficulty. I mean, that's just speculation. We don't know. Right. They but, didn't really go into it a lot. Yeah. We're gonna learn more. There will probably get another update trailer a couple months from now, and we'll know more about the game. But I'll say with all these different things that have have come to light, it definitely. Um, is making me reconsider uh, getting getting this game, uh, even for sixty dollars. Uh, and it, if Bowser's Fury is extensive, if there is like some added difficulty or something to kind of remix mm -hmm. the gameplay a little bit more, I'm all in on this. Like I am, I am on the edge of like being committed to buying this this version, which I wasn't until we saw all these updates for it. Yeah, I'm I'm I mean, pretty excited about it. Like, or only... I'm pretty surprised about what it is, and it, it from what we've seen so far, it's pretty exciting. So I might yeah. double dip. 
Maybe. The only Wii U port I bought was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because it had a lot of new content and because it's Mario Kart, so you gotta, you gotta buy it. But uh, I honestly, I, I haven't bought any of the other ones. Like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, my favorite platformer ever made. I didn't really buy it. I had already played it a lot on my Wii U. All they did is put it in 1080p and slap on some Funky Kong. Like, I just played that game like two years ago. I'm not playing it again. Yeah, um, I mean, Mario Kart Deluxe is the only one for me. Uh, I might do yeah. Pikmin 3. It has, I mean, it has new content in there. Pikmin uh, 3 so. I never actually beat, and it yeah. has been a while since I played it, so I might, might buy that one. Yeah. But uh, it, it's just hard to get me to pay $60 for a game I, I just played a few years ago. Right. Like, Wii U ports are great for people who haven't played the Wii U, but, like, I just played these games. <laughs> like, I just played them, so um, most of the time I, I don't really need to, but... 3D World I haven't played in probably, like, five years? I don't know. Something like that. Long time. And, uh, um, it seems to have a lot of new content, so... I'm 100% committed to getting this game. Like, assuming like, financial ruin doesn't have something, I am I am definitely getting this game. How yeah, do you feel about it? I said in my reaction video that if it had online multiplayer, I wouldn't, like, immediately be on it. Yeah. And then it, I said it in the reaction video, not expecting them to say anything about that, just as a side joke kind of thing. And then I think Twitter, like, I want to say 20 minutes after I uploaded that video, said that they were doing just that. I was like, oh, yeah. well, I, I added your media. I was like, oh, we shifted. You called it. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, oh, I can't back out now. I have to buy this. I, I said I was going to. That's it. It's over. Set it on camera. It's mortalized. So exactly. I'll say that for 3 All Stars, not 3 All Stars, um, for 3D World, what sort of made me not love it as much as the other Mario games was that the whole multiplayer thing just felt like a waste. I hated playing with other people. It was just <laughs> annoying, um, if, especially because the game wasn't very fast, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then you throw in other people and they throw you off and like you don't have the camera to really focus on yourself so you can just kind of hone in on platforming. That just took it away. Like mm -hmm. For me, Mario is about platforming. So all of that took it away from me. I didn't like that. It just felt like a mess. Um, but with all these different changes, Maybe I'll be willing to revisit the idea of playing this game co-op because if the camera has been right. adjusted upon if the movement is faster And there's also online like all those different things can improve the issues I had with playing a game co-op to begin with so I yeah. might be yeah, I, I'm I, Like I said, I'm on the fence right now Like if one more little thing that really impresses me or if I just find out Bowser's Fury is pretty extensive I'm in on this it it definitely looks like they've improved on things significantly. I think right. it helps that because it's online, if you're, let's say if you're the type of person who just kind of wants to focus on platforming and just kind of complete the objective or beat the game 100% or whatever the case may be, implying that this game's online is functional and you can play the entirety of the game, you know, beginning to finish, you can just play with the people you know that have that exact same mentality as you, right? Like, you don't have to play yeah. as... If your friends, like, next are door trash. are trolls, <laughs> maybe that, or the trolls that just like to pick you up and throw you off cliffs, you don't have to worry about that as much if the online is functional and you can just play with like-minded people mm -hmm. who want to do the same thing as you. So I think that in that case, online is a huge plus for you. Yeah, like if me and Andres play it, I'm, I'm not gonna go around picking up, throwing off ledges. Um, I'll be pissed. And it's not as bad as New and Super I Mario will Bros. where it doesn't matter how you. much you try, you're going to mess up everybody around you because there's not enough room for everybody. Yeah, you just you you bonk on people just. It's like horrible. Playing, yeah, yeah. So the game definitely seems like a significant improvement. Um, and I, I really do want to kind of get into the details around this, but I guess I kind of want to get you guys take quickly on all the other stuff. Uh, like, there is the Mario Kart Live Circuit thing, which seems like a really cool execution of augmented reality. Yeah. It's, it's a I'm not going to buy it, probably. reality I've ever seen. Yeah, just because it's for yeah. kids, really. I'm, I'm not going to... Like, I don't want to spend $100 for a Mario Kart... Yeah. ...cart race around with my switch i i don't have room for that like it's cool like, I don't have but it's just, to do that. bro i i live in new york city what what a new york apartment has space for that i mean no, you could probably put it on your table just go back and forth that but, table is not big enough for that <laughs> just front back just reverse just forward reverse table. forward yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
That's, yeah. I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars to just make that for all my my like, baby park, man. Baby park. That's what you're going for. But it's a neat like, idea. Um, I obviously I think because of what it is, like I mean, maybe you can get creative with the tracks. But mm -hmm. obviously, it's not like Mario Kart 8 tracks where you're going upside down and flying through space. Yeah. Like, this is in your living room. It's racing in Something your living room or bedroom. I'm very curious about is if they will allow inclines. Because I'm not sure how that would work. Because obviously, part of it is an actual physical unit that has to be powerful enough to keep up speed on an incline. Whereas the AI don't. They don't well, have to I, do I, that. I, so I, I don't program yeah. program something that would slow down the AI. Or maybe it just has a powerful enough motor that it, it doesn't really matter. Well, I don't um, expect not, the motor sure. to be like a top tier, like you know, right. little it, it racing does have car the motor. Build it like speeding up and slowing down for like boosts and yeah, and, you know, obviously your mushrooms and things like that. So obviously it's got it's got some kick in there to go above what it's supposed to. Yeah, but my thing I'm is curious. that it's selling for a hundred dollars. You just you just gotta you gotta break it down like. You can buy go karts or whatever you call them. You know the radio. I don't. What's the name for it? RC cars. RC. Thank you. RC cars. Um, radio like you can buy car. RC cars. They cost a few hundred dollars, and there's no crazy gimmick. It's just the car itself with the remote. Like there's there are tiers yeah. to this. Like you have that, but it also has a camera that sees everything and it communicates with the switch. And then there's the software. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. For a hundred dollars, that's a lot. So I have to assume that that cart isn't very powerful. Not to mention, another thing that's going to increase the price is the pieces that they put in that also help you create a track. So there's a lot there. Yeah. There's a lot there. I have to assume that the RC car isn't going to have the most horsepower. But I mean, maybe it could still have enough. Like it doesn't have to go, you know, 20 miles per hour. It, it could, right. you know, it RC could go up to 10 or something. Like five. I don't if know. you paid a hundred dollars for an RC car, it'd probably go like 20, 30 miles per hour. Yeah, I mean, there there are definitely tiers to this. Um, I feel like this sh you should at least be able to do ramps. Like, I doubt you'll be able to do like do like a a Sonic loop. Oh, a like, loop? loop? Yeah, no. no, no. But Why would they even track that? <laughs> no. Um, like I, 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 I mean, I think tech is cool, but I just don't see it being practical for myself. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is just like a, one of those like weird little spin-off things. It, it's kind of like Labo. Um, La although, you know, I felt like Labo, Labo had a lot of... Labo is a more interesting idea for me, personally. Has more selling potential. Um, out of... I mean, out of all these interesting tech things they've been doing, I think Ring Fit is like the one that I would actually see myself using the most. I bought it. I play, I've yeah. played more than, than Labo, so... <laughs> Um, I have Labo VR and I've played yeah. that. I've probably put like 15 hours into Breath of Wild VR, something like that. Yeah, and those, yeah these are all cool things. I but I put it in that category. It's not like a. I don't want to say it's like not a real game, but it's not a real game. It's a, it's a yeah. side spin-off little thingy like like Labo or or something like that, uh, which is fun. But yeah, probably not for me. This is more clearly geared towards children. Now, of course, if, if you're like 30 or 40 and you still get this, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get it. It's just, you know, if you're into RC cars and stuff, it's probably cool. But I definitely see, see this being more geared towards like super you know, cool younger for audience. Kids. Yeah, like if I absolutely. had children, I'd buy this for them. And, yeah, and they'd love it. If I had children, I'd buy this for my younger I would siblings. buy it and probably siblings, play it a lot so. with you, my kids. You buy it in space for your kids. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's a cool little thing. Uh, but beyond that, there was the, I mean, we got, we're getting the original um, Mario All-Stars that's going, that's being added to Nintendo Online. It's already been added. Uh, and then there's also, there's the yeah. Game & Watch thing, which I think is just going to be a cool little novelty collector's item. And then right. there's Mario 35, which I think is really cool. It's basically Super Tetris cool. 99, but instead of Tetris, you're playing Mario, which I think is awesome. I'm very excited it's, for that. It's interesting how they're doing it because they are going that Tetris route where if you defeat an enemy, it sends it to the, uh, the other player. So you're not actually playing. It's not like a typical battle royale where you're actually playing yeah. with other people. Well, the if they did it that it's, way, it would be annoying. It's, like it's, you it's said, not in... like Soviet Jump. Soviet Jump is essentially if Mario was like a traditional. Um, uh, why did the name slip? You, you guys know that type of game. Platformer. 
not platformer. Um, battle Royale? Yes, Battle Royale. Uh. If it was like a typical Battle Royale. So if you jump as like Mario with a typical Battle Royale, you, you're you in a 2D platformer. Yeah. A lot of the enemies and items are very much like Mario, but you There's actually fight other people and like they are in there in your level. Whereas this takes a different approach where it just sends enemies to it, which is more like Tetris 99. Um, which I'm not, I, I feel like that's going to be hectic in its own way. But it's it's not exactly how I would have imagined them doing it, which isn't bad. It's just different. Yeah, I, I see um an interesting question here from Captain Rex. We'll go back to Mario 34 in a moment. Um, what do you think the new Mario Kart means for the future of Switch? Do you think we will still take uh, Mario Kart 9 on the Switch? Like, will we get Mario Kart 9 on the Switch? I, uh, I think this is actually, it goes against the idea of it now i don't think it completely dispels the idea but i think it, it kind of makes it at least me personally i feel like it decreases the chances of mario kart 9 happening on switch like they decided to do this to kind of put in mario kart for the anniversary um it's definitely a separate thing uh but maybe like that's enough mario kart for switch already you have mario kart deluxe and you have mario kart live circuit i don't know if they're gonna do um... a mario kart 9 as well could they yes I'm actually surprised that you're saying that because my my initial thought was no this has no bearing on mario kart 9 whatsoever no hey, no i think they'll right. release mario kart 9 this year like some people have been rumored no they're not gonna release this and then mario kart 9 you know in in november is the holiday game that's not gonna happen hey, yeah, i mean it, it could I, be a I separate thing has we... any bearing on uh, a potential mario kart 9 in the switch's life cycle we're gonna get so, like i feel like we're gonna get like pseudo confirmation of this, if mario kart 9 is gonna happen or not soon because the Mario Kart 8 team is also the ARMS team. ARMS came out in 2017, and they've been working on something. What is that something, like that main project? Once we find out what that right. main project is, then we'll know. Like, if it's not Mario this, Kart this 9... This upcoming June will be four years after ARMS, so I, I assume they have something ready for next year. Yeah, or maybe it's Mario... It, could be, it could be Mario Kart 9. I'm not saying it's not going to be Mario Kart 9. I just feel like, you know... <sighs> If, I guess if they had Mario Kart in development, this might have been a good time to announce it, you know? But at the same time, if you look at all the announcements here, none of it was for, like, far off into the future. So if Mario Kart not yeah. is in development, it's not coming out until late next year or right. the second the long, half of next the year. The longest game was uh, the 3D World port, which is coming in February. So it's yeah. very early next year. So it's not even that far away. No, it's like five yeah, months or something. but all of these celebrations are taking place like until March thirty uh, first, which is really interesting. A lot of people have been talking about this. this is I guess this is kind of a, that one of the controversial points we should get into in this video. So the limited run three um, D All Stars is going to be discontinued physically on the thirty first, and the way the wording was, it almost implied that. The digital will also be discontinued on the 31st and i'm not 100 yes, sold is, on that but the wording suggested that um, the wording specifically says if you have purchased it and you archive it you can re-download it but it will not be available on the eShop. so it will not be sold in any form like they're not going to manufacture obviously you can buy a used copy but they are not manufacturing the game in any form or officially selling it from nintendo in any form after march 31st so that it's interesting like i wonder why they are doing that like are they it, it, it's interesting for several different reasons um like i, I guess it, it makes you think like wh why would they do that because this is obviously going to sell a lot this is like the thing people mm -hmm. have been talking about all year like it's the one thing we've been kind of excited about we've we've had reason to be excited about um and while i do think there's more coming we're going to talk about it a little bit later into the podcast this is the thing everyone's been excited about. This would be an evergreen title. This would sell millions upon millions. Why is Nintendo cutting that short? It's just, a, it's a little perplexing. Like yeah. with the SNES Classic and the N NES Classic, with those, it made sense to cut them off because eventually you want people to buy those classic games on, say, the Switch. So, you know, that mm. would, it would have taken away from their plans with that. But what does discontinuing 3D All-Stars, how does that impact future sales they may have? Like, that's the only thing that I can sort of think that might make sense here. Like, maybe they do have plans to have separate releases for these games. And maybe they right. feel like they can make more money that way in the long run. 
That's the only way it makes sense to me. Otherwise, I think this is just kind of a weird thing. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if next year we got N64 support for Switch Online. So if Mario 64 is in there, it's basically like the same thing as this uh, collections version. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't see why you would have both. I mean, it's an interesting the same point. Like, what if we free, get essentially? Yeah, what if we get N64 Classic on like not Classic, but the online app? next year and the year after that we get gamecube and the year after that we get Wii. that would be crazy i don't expect that but it's, it's like the, the switch could do it like if you can make sunshine work you can make any game work on the switch and nintendo's shown with with galaxy that they're more than willing to mimic Wii controls with the joy cons so you know they could have a situation where there are more Wii n64 and gamecube games that are they come to switch later down the road and maybe that's why they're cutting it off just because they have some sort of plan to reuse games like this that's the I mean, only thing that probably, makes sense to me they probably plan to release them separately at some point or maybe uh like what brandon said they're adding a 64 classic type yeah. of situation that could impact the sales or they could just be hoping that many people rush to buy this more so than usual considering this the limited time it's available uh, yeah. Maybe there's a rush in now when it releases in like two, I think two weeks, uh, and might, maybe there's another rush of people who buy it on uh, the holiday season, and another rush right before it, it's gone for good, right? Um, maybe that's what they're hoping for. Maybe they're hoping for that kind of thing. Um, there's, and what do they do? Do they, do they announce that it's still for sale afterwards too? Then so they can make more money? Because like, I get what you mean. <laughs> like by doing this, you do increase demand for it, so it sells a lot in this period but once that period is done it you can no longer sell and with nintendo titles they are in general evergreen titles that will continue to sell so it's not it's it's a little different with nintendo because you know their games are going to continue to sell right so like if you cut it off you're cutting off years of consistent sales so unless they plan on saying hey since you guys love this so much we're going to make it available again it would God, be it's weird that. for them to you know what i mean like as a mark yeah, yeah, I, I agree with no, you that I, it obviously will make the game sell more during this period because of that demand that they're creating i just wonder like long term is that the smartest strategy for them unless their strategy is to fool us and still sell it again later down the road i th i think the m most likely scenario not the one i would prefer but i think the most likely scenario is that they make this limited for the reason i mentioned where it creates demand right and then say time passes like six months a year whatever the case is then they release one of the games separately mm -hmm. right so that way they're not necessarily bringing 3d all-stars back but they are making one of the games that were on it available or maybe all three whatever the case is but they would do it on a separate way that way they still make money off of 64 galaxy uh sunshine uh, and they can still make money off of them, but just not do the 3D All Stars celebration period. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I, that's that's my thinking. Um, I don't think that they're gonna re-release 3D All Stars. I think that they're just gonna repurpose those yeah. games in some way at some point, or at least they I think, think they, they will. The 3D yeah. All Stars to be like a collector's thing, like a like the same way the original like, All Stars was. Yeah, like it was at limited the time release. it released, or you missed out. Right. Of. They, they yeah. could probably be looking at 3D All Stars similarly to how they look at the Game and Watch they're putting out where it's kind of like this collector's item rather than like oh this is how you get the games like maybe some point down the line you can get the games but it's not the collector's item anymore yeah 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 i i, I feel like that's probably what it is i guess people are scratching their heads at this because why cut it off digitally well i guess in right. some six to some extent it's still like a collector's item just a digital one of it that you can't really resell but you have it um you know so it's interesting hmm right I mean, it's still a weird decision any way you shake it. Like, it's yeah. just a weird and odd decision that only but Nintendo would do. It's something that only <laughs> but, Nintendo... It's Nintendo's one of the few that can get away with it because their brand is so strong um, because people want this. Uh, you know, I, I think it's going to work out for them because it's going to create a lot of sales for this period. And again, I, I think it makes sense to think that they're, they do have some plan to maybe reuse them to some extent in the future. Like, maybe they think, oh, we might do this, and even if they don't, just because they might, they're gonna discontinue it. And that, and that 
that's it. Uh, I think that's pretty much the explanation there. So, right. uh, I want to I want to continue to push forward here because there's still a lot I want to kind of get into. Uh, but in terms of like just before I jump into the speculation part, of what this all suggests about Nintendo's plans moving forward, is there anything else you guys want to kind of bring up or talk about in relation to this direct, like in terms of the content we saw there? I don't think there was anything else really. Oh, it is interesting that they're doing a Splatfest for stars yeah. versus mushrooms, I think. Mm -hmm. It's so weird that they're still supporting Splatoon, even though they keep saying they're going to cut it off and then they just don't. <laughs> it's like that game is just going to be supported forever. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just straight into the Switch 2 with a with the sequel and that, that's when they end the support is when Splatoon 3 comes out. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a, a splat for us for that, so that's cool. And they have actual merchandising for it, which looks cool. Like the actual like logos and stuff, the artwork for it is really cool. I kind of want those shirts, so I'm, I might I might buy those if I can. Yeah, there's a lot of merchandise in there. Cool. It's not the kind of thing I expected to see in a direct. Like, this was a no. unique Nintendo direct. Um, like it, I would say it's the best Nintendo direct we've gotten all year. Uh, because it, it's <laughs> not hard. Yeah, um, it's you know it gave us some stuff, some things to be excited about. But at the end of the day, most of it was pretty much repurposed content. Like there wasn't like any announcement of like a whole new game or anything like that there, unless you count Mario Kart Life Circuit. But I consider that more of like a side thing. Um, it was more like a toys to life sort of thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So it it's interesting how they were able to stir up so much hype with minimal brand new content. Uh, but it still was really cool, and just to kind of see them like push other things beyond just like straight up software, the thing we don't normally see in direct. So I think that's very exciting. But to sort of start shifting things over to the other half of this of this podcast here, be this anniversary direct, like to me was like okay, so Nintendo's doing this for their Mario anniversary. Maybe they're going to do something similar with the Zelda anniversary. I'm not saying I expect them to do a Zelda direct just like this one, but you look at all the merchandising, everything they're doing, there's all like a whole bunch of things. It wasn't just the 3D All-Stars thing and another game. It was like it's several games, several merchandising lines, several like there's a lot of different branding things they're doing with this. And we saw trademarks for a slew of merchandising things for Mario, and we saw the same thing done for Zelda merchandising as well. So I feel like the implication is is that Nintendo was gearing up for Mario and we're now seeing what that was for, but we've also seen the same sim or similar signs for Zelda as well, and Zelda's anniversary is this February, the 35th one. So maybe Nintendo has some plans with that, especially considering that the Zelda brand has sort of grown over the years. Nintendo is starting to use it kind of like Mario in the sense that they want to have some sort of Zelda game or Zelda brand game in the year. Uh, so I really feel like there's a good chance we're going to see some sort of Zelda 30th celebration really soon. What do you guys think? I mean, I would absolutely love it. I mean, if anybody knows me, they know I'm a huge Zelda fan. It's way, way more important to me than Mario. Even though I love Mario, Zelda's just it is so far above that. So they did like a collection, Skyward Sword, HD, you got Wind Waker HD and Twilight Prince HD, they already, they already made those, you just slap those in there and then you make Twi or, uh, Skyward Sword HD and you put that in a collection that, uh, honestly, I'd be way more hyped <laughs> for that than, uh, um the 3D All-Stars collection though, to be fair uh, <laughs> Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD, even though they're already made, are <laughs> more, uh like, they're, they're better upgrade than those games yeah, um, but, but those are... Uh, so it's kind of like, if you break down the 3D All-Stars thing, each game would be like $20, right? And they're minimal and minimally enhanced. But Wind Waker was a $60 game, Twilight Princess was a $60 game, even with their HD remasters. I think remasters. they were both 50 when they released. I know, I know Twilight Princess HD was 50 but you could buy the $60 one, which came with the Amiibo. Maybe you're right. I don't remember it, it i i believe so because I, I i think i paid 60 for it with the amiibo with the wolf link amiibo i'm not sure about wind waker hd though i bought that with the, it came with my wii u so hmm. i mean i would say that i'm definitely in the same boat as you where i kind of value zelda 
substantially higher than most Nintendo games, not even just Mario, just like yeah. compared to all of Nintendo's catalog. It's like Zelda's either number one. Actually, actually no, I would say it is number one. <laughs> it's like Zelda is my, my favorite franchise, period, out of anything. So yeah, I would say like if I had to, if I hypothetically made a top ten favorite games of all time, was two of them from the same franchise, and that's Zelda. Yeah. So it's the only franchise that does that for me. <laughs> so. It would like if they came out with a huge anniversary thing and they did what you said. They put Charlie Princess HD, Wind Waker, and then they made a Skyward Sword HD and they put it on there. Yeah, that's a day one cop. Like I'm already buying yeah. Mario. <laughs> so yeah. imagine if they came out with a Zelda one. Like I would be on that even more so than I am Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to what see I that. Like... Go on. No, I was gonna say what I would like to see is a much better enhanced port of a game that we've already seen before, kind of like 3D World. Uh, I think that'd be kind of fun to see. Like, what if they came out with, like, a... Skyward Story HD with an additional dungeon and voice acting? Maybe! Yeah. <laughs> maybe. And maybe instead of having uh, Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD, it's, and, like, they'll have those two, but instead of putting Skyward Sword HD in there, they put in something like, I don't know, the Majora's Mask um, remake, and it's, like, higher resolution, or same thing with Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Um, they pick one of those, maybe Ocarina, because that's like the, the, you know, the more popular one, I guess. Yeah. Um, so they they put those together in a collection, and then they make Skyward Sword this bigger deal with like much more added to it, kind of like the 3D World uh, port is. Yeah. I would like to see that because I'm way more excited about the 3D World port than I am the All Stars collection. Uh, yeah. Just because there's so much more being added to it, Bowser's Fury. I don't know what's in it, but new content is always cool. It's and like an open area too, which we didn't talk about before, like which is interesting. It look it looks like a much broader open area, so yeah, it might kind of challenge the gameplay mechanics of 3D World, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Right, there's, there's no flagpole. <laughs> no didn't see one in that, in that stage. Yeah. Right. What, what, what if that's more of a hub world? Like 2D. That's true, and the or. I was thinking, imagine you take something linear, kind of like 3D World, because 3D World is a little more open compared to 2D Mario's, but it's still, you know, more of a 3D game. Yeah. And Skyward Sword was kind of uh, criticized for being a much more linear Zelda yeah. game. So imagine they did something that mirrored that, like they had a, a little area that was more open in how you do certain things. Just make the sky actually. You could expand on the like, sky. Put stuff there. Maybe add yeah, another sky crazy. dungeon. That's such an unrealized so, all right, concept. All right, so let me go into full like pipe dream what I would love to see for a Skyward Sword. <laughs> actually, before I do that, let me let me put out an idea that sort of supports it. So, um, one cool thing about the Mario Anniversary Direct besides the actual content in there was that they did confirm that Mario Remasters are coming out this September, right? So, guess what that means? There's still nothing announced for November or December yet. November is the best-selling period of the year uh, for Nintendo, or just every business in history. So, something's going to be announced for that period. If at least one more game is going to be announced for this year. At least one more. Is it going to be something amazing? Maybe. Is it going to be something underwhelming? Potentially. But point is, there's at least one more announcement happening, maybe more than that. Because we have November and December, the holiday months of the year, arguably the most important months of the year, and the big hyped up game that we've been talking about all year is coming out this September. So what else is happening? So Game and Watch. You got me. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. No, I, I I don't think you guys actually do you guys actually think that or that's no, definitely I mean, a joke, that's, right? That's the only thing coming out in November. Yeah. That I, I yeah. Suppose. I mean there's Crown Tundra DLC, um, but I think they have to have like a retail release game. To come out during that period, like right. a game. You can't purchase that separate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't think you could do, do just DLC and like a novelty, like collector's item. There has to be like an actual game. Um, so what could that be? There's a, a slew of options. We don't know what it's going to be, obviously, but that kind of uh, leans me into what I want to talk about for Skyward Sword. So the only way like this Skyward Sword I'm going to talk about right now would make sense if it's a separate standalone release. Otherwise. You know, if it's like in a collection, they're not going to change it that much. Look at with the 3D All-Stars. They didn't change them that much, but it's a collection. That's kind of like the, you know, if you want to have them in one package, that's the compromise. They're not going to have new content in there like we see with these Wii U ports like like uh, 3D World and Pikmin 3. 
But if, Pic if Skyward Sword gets its own standalone like thing, and it, it has the opportunity to get that additional content in there, and maybe that's what Nintendo uses to sort of close out the holidays for this year. Maybe. And I think it would be a great way to sort of lead into 2021, especially if they're going to have some serious anniversary celebrations for Zelda in the early part of the year as well. We'll see. Maybe we have to wait until like March or something or February to get Skyward Sword HD if that's real. But just let me talk about this idea now. So the idea is... And I don't believe this is happening. It's just like what I think would be the ideal way to like remaster Skyward Sword. Obviously, visually, it'd be like the Windward Creation treatment. It'll look amazing. And then you give us pro controller support, like, you know, dual analog controls, and then still have the Joy-Con option for motion controls. But you add voice acting, because that precedent has already been set with Breath of the Wild for Zelda games to have voice acting. And since Skyward Sword had that story that's arguably the best told story Such in the Zelda game, story. adding some compelling voice acting there will sell it that much more. You do that, offer hero mode from the beginning, because it's something that isn't in the game, but you have to unlock it. Offer it from the beginning like the other HD remasters for Zelda. And add new content, expand the sky area, add another dungeon in there. But this dungeon is like a side story. It's like a separate thing. You know, it's not part of the main campaign, but you can do it pretty much maybe just at some point in the game. And it has its own story that perhaps give us a bit of a glimpse into what's going on with Breath of the Wild 2. That would be an ideal Skyward Sword HD remaster. Okay, I respect it. See, if I if it came out with that all that, I, I'd be down for it. I I, I I like the idea of it. Um, I I was also thinking of a totally, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a separated area, kind of like what Bowser's Fury is doing. Yeah, right. that would get much more. Not obviously not to the scope of like say Breath of the Wild or another. Yeah the games out there but a smaller i guess more contained area that allows you to go about and do things your own way because i feel like mm -hmm. sky was criticized so much for the linearity and while the story was amazing because it is one of the best ones in the series uh i feel like if you added something like that it would even get some of the naysayers to want to purchase it here's an idea um with going alongside what you're saying what if the way they would do that is it's another area like a province, but instead of it being on the ground, it's in the sky, so you can still have like that seamless sky game. But I think a part of the problem people had was that when you the sky wasn't connected to the provinces below, it was all segmented. Mm -hmm. So, what if you expand the sky a little bit and the area that they add, it's like what you're saying, like it has its own little hub area where you can kind of explore openly, but it's more contained. What if that is like, um, the sky city in Twilight Princess? They revisit that idea, except. Skyward Sword takes place way before Skyward Sword. I mean, way before Twilight Princess. And in Twilight Princess, that city in the sky is just ruins. There's barely any people left there. The Ochako, right? That's how you pronounce them. What if you were to revisit that area in the past in Skyward Sword, and it's like a full-blown city with civilization, and there's something going on there. Maybe the dragons are attacking or something, and you have to help defend that. that and there's a story there with that. And it's like its own self-contained area, whole city, some wilds, things like that. I think that would work. It'd be cool. It'd be awesome. I would love because Skyward Sword is kind of the game that sets a lot of the lore for the series or explains mm -hmm. a lot of the lore. So continue that and have a separate, like, after the game ends story where you actually follow, like, what Groose and everybody's doing on the ground as they're, like, settling the unknown An epilogue territories. Story. Yeah, okay. maybe even and Link goes to help that uh, Gerudo Groose kind of. Yeah, they can use that to link to the Gandor thing, which is similar. Yeah. It still helps to support Breath of the Wild too, because we're obviously learning about Gandor from Breath of the Wild too. Yeah, I like that idea. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you could definitely have uh, have all of that while also having an angle of like kind of beginning the origins of Hyrule, like maybe yeah. setting up and having that sort of thing having all these species come together and just kind of coexisting in a single kingdom that not a kingdom yet obviously but you know it'll, we all know it eventually becomes that so you can kind of have a lot of these things just kind of come together in this sort of like realization moment like oh this is going to be hyrule soon and Groose is this and you know this and this and that's going on and it kind of could just piece it all together yeah, it pieces it all together. Thank you. That's exactly the yeah. phrase I was looking for. Yeah, no problem. 
That is a part of way too ambitious for anything that they would actually do. Nah, yeah, this but, is this is all yeah, like, like this, we're just being fanboys right now, guys. We don't yeah. expect this to happen. We don't. But just to like offer maybe like a window of hope, my my belief is that if anything like this is possible, Skyward Sword is coming out this year as November's big holiday game. Otherwise, no. That's just not if like if we get if 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 we go through 2020 and there's no Skyward Sword announced, I still think Skyward Sword could be coming for the 35th anniversary for Zelda, but it's not gonna be like getting additional new content. Um, and it's gonna be like a standalone something to like help like tie things over until the next year. Because Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out next year. That's happened. Like, um unless there's like some sort of crazy secret announcement for it to come out this November, which I do not believe at this stage. That's, um yeah, it's definitely not happening. If, if assuming that's not happening, which I agree with, they're gonna use Breath of the Wild 2 to help celebrate the 35th anniversary, and that's gonna be one of the biggest releases for 2021. Like that that's that's pretty much it's not confirmed, but like Everyone thinks that's happening. Do you guys disagree with that at all? No, I don't disagree. Yeah, so if Breath of the Wild 2 is the big release for next year from Nintendo, or at least one of them, they're not going to release a Skyward Sword with, like, a whole other expanded area in there in these story. Like, they might still release Skyward Sword. I think it's possible to get a Skyward Sword HD remaster in the same year, but it's not going to be, like, a dramatic like enhancement with voice acting and new areas to explore. I think it's gonna be a little bit more on the minimalist side. Um, Which is exactly why I don't want it to be part of a hypothetical collection because I want to see Skyward Sword come back with a lot added to it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, like now Nintendo has sort of changed their standard, right? Because back in the day with Wind Waker HD and even Twilight Princess HD, we all wanted a new dungeon. We all wanted that. We never got it because back then Nintendo was more minimalist with the remasters or enhancements. We look at everything that comes out now. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, new story, new epilogue story. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, new epilogue story. 3D World Deluxe, Bowser's Fury. Uh, even Tokyo Mirage Sessions came out in January. That has additional missions and stuff too. Or I don't know what it is, but it's new, it, there's additional content in there as well. I, I think even Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Deluxe had like some new stuff in there. Point is, is like now whatever we get some sort of enhancement or re-release, there's new content in there. So... If Skyward Sword got that same treatment, that would be an opportunity for it to get some sort of new content, because mm -hmm. that's the standard Nintendo's created nowadays. Yeah, for me though, I, I'd be perfectly fine if it was just some new things to do in the sky, because it's like nothing there. Um, and I think that the game stands up and it would, I'd love to replay it just how it is. So if they just fleshed out that, that, you know, that concept that they didn't really do anything with originally, I'd be happy and that, that'd be enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we end up getting a, a collection that does have Skyward Sword included, then the most I would expect is this 1080p, right? And yeah, Which, like I wouldn't expect this. If you much. just want to play Skyward Sword without any new stuff, that game doesn't. It's it's like Galaxy. It doesn't need a full on right. like remake or a super in in depth remaster. Um, it it literally just needs. Well, to be the, the controls are the, are the most some... significant change that would be needed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah right i just i guess it's just I, if you want to look at it this way i'm being very greedy here <laughs> i just really want yeah. skyward sword to come back with some 3d world like enhancements like just a big amount of content just jammed in there yeah oh i'm yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you i'd love to see that but it's a lot more than a need <laughs> yeah so i guess you know we all agree breath of the wild 2 is coming out next year we, do we all agree that Intel's going to do something for a 35th anniversary? Maybe not a whole direct, but there's going to be something, some sort of game marking the 35th anniversary. Do right. we agree with that, at least? I think it'd be crazy for them not to. Zelda is arguably getting, like, in some ways, bigger than Mario, than 3D Mario. Like, you, you got Breath of the Wild yeah, it's outselling it. Yeah. 3D Mario, which is absolutely insane. Like, that never has happened before. It's the first time ever, so it's it's something that they they have to look at and say, we got to put even you know just as much or close to as much priority on Zelda as we do Mario. So to to have the year prior the 35th anniversary of Mario be such a huge deal, and then next year be like, yeah, what if Zelda's a thing? What? Huh? Um, no. It's not gonna happen. No, like, I can't do that. Bare minimum. 
Breath of the bare minimum, Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be pushed with a 35th anniversary. Yeah. Bare minimum. Um, but yeah. I expect a little bit more than that. Um, I so think it's realistic to think that when we're graced, the end Twilight Princess, they will come considering they haven't come I, out I yet. Like yeah, there's a reason why they haven't already been brought to yeah. the Switch. Right. A lot of other Wii U games. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting that since they announced that Wii U ports were a thing. I'm like, yes, please. Well, Bring since we're on the note of those two, though, uh, I princess. see that pra Patrick ba sorry, Patrick Bradley is asking, when Wind Mercury and Twilight Princess get poured over, do you think it will be a deluxe version with added content? Um, Probably not. Yeah, yeah, I don't really expect it because they've already been remastered and redone. I don't think they're going to go back to it a third time. Especially if they're going to yeah. come together or something, or like all it's all a part of a slew of Zelda games to release in a single year. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't really yeah. make sense, and I, I don't see them releasing Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD separately. I think at the very least that would be a double pack. It might not come with Skyward Sword HD, Skyward Sword HD might be a separate thing, considering it's not been remastered before, and they want my, my excuse me, English is hard, uh, might want to uh, add some new stuff to that, but uh, I think at the very least Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD would be slapped in a, a dual pack there. I don't think they would so, sell those separately. Alright, so how does this all pan out though? Okay, so first of all, let me ask you real quick. Do you, you so you guys, we've been talking about Skyward Sword, like do you guys think Skyward Sword HD is happening? Like within the next year? Oh yeah. Um, within the next year, I'd say it's 50-50, but I definitely think it's uh, gonna be a thing. Yeah, I think it's likely it'll happen. We just think when is more the uh, tricky yeah. part of the question. Yeah, I mean, we had Eiji and Uma like, say, hey, you guys want Skyward Sword on Switch, right? And then nothing. Right. We PR were like, no, that's not happening. No, no, no. But he doesn't, do he doesn't just say that. perfect for the 35th anniversary, though, because they celebrated and they have art for the 25th anniversary. I have, I, I could go get it right now, actually. Um, my Skyward you know, in fact, I will. I will go get the box for it, and I believe it has the 25th anniversary logo on it. So, hold on. Yeah. I, I just feel that it's just too perfect for what, you know what I mean? Like, it's too perfect not to have Skyward Sword yeah. released during this so, celebration. On. Yeah. My yeah. phone's back in and but down here. But on, I have the box, and right here, it actually, it's got the artwork. It came with the the music, and that's yeah, flipped, flipped for me. Yeah, the 25th, you, 25th anniversary. anniversary we there. see it, though. Yeah, and, they... uh, that, that was a big thing. They, they pushed the 25th anniversary with, with Skyward Sword, and so I think that doing it for the 35th anniversary would be pretty, pretty cool. And it, it, to, to mark the 10 year anniversary for Skyward Sword would be next holiday. Um, the actual anniversary for Zelda is this February, so it's kind of interesting. Like, how will Nintendo do that? Like, this year, they did it all in September, which is the actual anniversary time for Mario. Right, which they no don't always do for right. anniversary things. Right. So, we'll, what will they do for Zelda? Is it, it's interesting. I, I, it's hard for me to say for sure. And there's like, the, the, I guess the thing is, to trying to kind of piece together how this all happens. So, let's just say, for the sake of argument. Skyward Sword's happening. Breath of the Wild 2 is happening. And there's probably other stuff happening as well. Like, where does this all fit in? Because here's another interesting thing, another wrinkle I want to throw at you guys. There's the reports of Switch Revision coming early 2021. There's even a lot of uh, Breath of the Wild listings popping up from different sites. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, I mean. And there's like even a collector edition one. That when that one came out, I want to say WTNT, which is a um, some sort of European distributor, if I'm remembering correctly. And that site also leaked Witcher 3 for Switch before that was announced, and no one thought that was going right. to happen on Switch. So the point is and that... Collector's editions are things you typically don't put up. Like, some of the companies will just around throw the corner. up things. Right. Yeah. They, they'll just throw up things like, like, you know, obviously as soon as Breath of the Wild 2 got its, its uh, sequel trailer, there was a listings for that game, and it meant yeah. absolutely nothing. But a collector's edition, you have no idea first when what that is going to be priced. So if people pre-order that and it's way more expensive than what you put it up for, you just lost a ton of money. You have no idea what yeah. that's going to be priced, what content that's going to be, or if it's even going to be a thing. Like if they pre-order a collector's edition and it's not a thing, now all of a sudden you have to refund them all that money. So yeah. you don't put up a listing for a collector's edition that doesn't exist. 
Hmm. Unless you're just really dumb. I don't know. Well, maybe, you know, it's just like... Uh, maybe sometimes these... are really dumb, I don't know. Sometimes these listings do feel more like predictions. Um, you know? Uh... So it could be that they just predict. I do feel like it's a good prediction. I do think there's probably going to be some sort of collector edition for Breath of the Wild too. Whenever it's a big Zelda game, there's always some sort of collector set up mm -hmm. there. That's to be expected. So I don't know if it holds a lot, a lot of weight. But when you factor that in on top of the fact that this distributor also leaked Witcher Three, um, right? It I do think it adds a little bit more credibility to it. It's still not like a confirmation in my mind, but it definitely. I think I think it's it's worth considering for sure. Um, so you, you factor that in. if assuming that means anything, if it, if it is actually based off like some sort of inside information, what that suggests is that an announcement for it is not too far out, um, which would also imply the game is not that far from release. But again, we don't know that for sure, so don't assume that. But mm -hmm. if that's all the case, and the Switch reports are also true about an early 2020 release for a Switch revision. What to me that suggests is that Nintendo's going to close out their fiscal year with Breath of the Wild 2 and a Switch revision this March, which is a month after the Zelda anniversary, which is also interesting to me because guess what happened the, during the Direct? We also got confirmation that 3D World Deluxe or whatever it's being called, 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, right. that's coming out this February, the Zelda anniversary time. So either Nintendo isn't plan ha is just not going to do Zelda anniversary stuff early in the year and they save it for later. Or their big Zelda anniversary plan is to put something smaller in February or maybe January or a little bit before that, maybe Skyward Sword, and then they have Zelda come out in March, end of fiscal year, with the Switch revision. And since it's just a month afterwards, that makes perfect sense. They could totally do that. And obviously they would announce it maybe, you know, around the anniversary time so we would know about that. Um, I think that's a possibility, but it's only assuming this collector's edition listing is legitimate. If it's not... Breath of the Wild 2 might be coming a little bit later. And maybe the Switch revision is still real, but it doesn't mean it has to come out for the end of fiscal year. Maybe it's like a summer thing. And also, it doesn't have to launch alongside Breath of the Wild 2, but they, right. it, there's a history of Zelda games and Switch systems coming out. Switch, Breath of the Wild 1 did really well. Link's Awakening, Switch Lite did really well. So I feel like there is a little bit of a pattern here. I think a lot of things sort of, like, are sort of come together for it to make sense. Um... But March is kind of soon from now, and a Skyward Sword is also happening. When does that happen? You know, like, the Skyward Sword HD mean Breath of the Wild 2 isn't coming for March? Because I feel like if there is a Skyward Sword coming, that would come before Breath of the Wild 2. In most cases. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't complain if we get Breath of the Wild 2 this March and Skyward Sword comes out right. next November. I, I wouldn't mean, complain, but I just don't expect them to do that. You could argue that... Um, with the with what they're doing with Mario, that the collection, the 3D All Stars collection, is is kind of like that the ma the major release, whereas 3D World is is the the smaller release, just because it's not yeah. as big of a, a game. Mm. But it's coming later. Um, obviously, they're adding more content, and that's probably the reason yeah. why. But you can argue like it's it's that same tar sort of divide in in content, I guess you could argue. So it's it's not necessarily like Skyward Sword doesn't have to come out before Breath of the Wild 2. It's not like Breath of the Wild 2 comes out and oh well Skyward Sword HD can't happen. Like that's not necessarily the case. They could maybe they want to have that game for Skyward Sword's actual anniversary. Yeah, and the 10-year anniversary. Breath of the Wild 2 for Breath of the Wild's anniversary. And to end, also so close the fiscal on, year yeah. and also maybe just to bolster up a Switch revision. Which I mean the reports right. say early 2021. March to me is early 2021. Um, like he, he's the other the other wrinkle to this is that Nintendo will want to close out their fiscal year strong, right? Um, yeah. So what would that be exactly? Uh, like last this year we got Animal Crossing close the fiscal year, and that was a great close for Nintendo. For twenty twenty, um, well, I mean March twenty twenty one, which would be the end of this fiscal year. We already know that three D World Deluxe is coming up this February. Considering if there's a Switch revision, like I can see a scenario where you have like back to back games because you look at when the Switch Lite came out, that period of September was stacked. Like Astral Chain came out the month before, Dragon Quest XI S and Link's Wicked came out that month. There was like what? Um, there were several published Nintendo games that came out within like a two month period 
they were all like right there next to the switch lights launch so i feel like if yeah. the switch revision is coming out early next year you're going to see a situation where several published nintendo games are going to come out close together you may even see like two major releases come out in the same month because that's what happened with the switch light and i feel like this switch revision might be an even bigger deal potentially I could see that, but the other thing we also have to think about is whether or not there will be some kind of internal delays related to these sort of... Yeah, um, absolutely. Like, I was thinking about yeah. that, right? Yeah, so, like... They could possibly have maybe originally planned Breath of the Wild 2 for uh, a March release, like you said, with the Switch revision or upgrade, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but considering... I, I believe there was even like a, a Mario challenge that said that it was supposed to be like in April when we didn't even know about this whole 35th anniversary thing until just yeah, now. Yeah, there, there's even uh, official, like, yeah. uh, dates and stuff that say April 14th. Yeah. Um, for, I forget what exactly Wait, it was for. Wait, for which game? They... For Pikmin 3 or um, for Mario? It was, a Mario it was for game. the, like, some kind of yeah, challenge for Mario Maker 2, I think, or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, and for that re what is that like a five month delay that they internally, anyways? Um, yeah. Well, so Pikmin Three Lux was supposed to come out around that point as well, and the idea, yeah. well, at least it, I don't know if Emily Rogers like specifically said it, but she at least alluded to it. It seemed that Pikmin Three Deluxe came out instead of Three D World Deluxe this October, so it looks like Three D World Deluxe was delayed from October to February. So that's November. Oh, December, Jan. It's it's a four month delay basically, or a three and a half month delay. So right. Um, that it. I I feel Sounds like it's about right. <laughs> yeah, having things being pushed up three to four months kind of makes sense. That's sort of my expectation here. Everything being pushed up that much makes sense to me. Right. Yeah, and if you think about it, if everything had gone according to plan, everything Mario related would have happened this year in, in its entirety. Like just twenty twenty would have been the year of Mario essentially. So yeah. If you think about it in that sense, Zelda, if they have plans for that, it would have been in the same sense. Like, it would have been maybe announced in April again or March, whatever the case may be, and then they would have it all spread out within that year. So if we go by this idea that these games have been delayed by three to five months or so, the Switch, depending on how far along the Switch Pro, whatever you want to call it, is, you it could release March, but then it could release with nothing. Because we don't know whether or not yeah. Skyward Sword, whatever that would have came out yeah. with, it, would be. Affected. I feel like right. worst case scenario, I I don't think Nintendo will release it without some games to support it. But maybe it's not as big as Breath of the Wild too. Maybe instead they have Skyward. Like if Skyward Sword is also nearing release, maybe they have that come out. You know, like they still have something. Right. It's just not the big big thing. I think that can maybe happen. Um, I want to point something out that's probably a, it's definitely a stretch. But I just want to put it out there. Um, so, I've, as I've been telling you guys for a while, um, my thinking, like ever since, like for a long time, my thinking is that this Switch revision, if it's real, it's not going to be called a Switch Pro. It's going to be called a Switch Plus. I really feel strongly about that naming. I think it makes a lot of sense because one, mm -hmm. Nintendo can't do Pro. They just can't do that. Sony does it. They're not going to do that. What else can they use that implies same generation but sort of like a deluxe newer version of that plus to me is perfect and mm -hmm. what's interesting about that the re what's a, a stretch here but maybe not that much of a stretch is that super mario 3d world is being the, the deluxe is being called super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury i know it's probably a stretch but i'm just putting it out there if the switch revision or if it's coming called switch bus is coming out this march and they have a they have a 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury thing. They might do something about that plus. I don't know. Like they, 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 I imagine it's just because that's what they did for the uh, Mario and Luigi games. Is that they, they had the plus Bowser's minions and the they plus used the plus symbol to do it for the, the that ones. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, like I said, I, I I fully agree it's a stretch. I'm just putting it out there. If also, it's called, I, yeah. I, I want to put out a, a secondary maybe less likely name but something i think that would actually be way cooler um what if they called it the switch advanced i mean they have the switch light which re obviously references the ds light switch sp what if they reference the uh game boy advance and call it the uh switch advanced 
So the in so here's the thing about that though. The Game Boy Advance was a next generation jump from the original Game Boy. They used that advance to imply sure. it was a next generation jump. So while I don't disagree that that would wouldn't work, hit like the, there's already a naming there, and that naming implied next generation. So that could potentially create some confusion. But also, it might just be like, hey, this mm. sounds cool. I'll get it, you know, because it would sound cool. Switch Advance. Like that. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. There's also the very high chance that I think is the most likely chance that they would just name it something that nobody would ever want to name their system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we've had DSi, so yeah. they could yeah. what is it, switch E. They could call it like whatever they want, God. really. And they, yeah. Something it, based on the actual yeah. like feature. Yeah, because Nintendo's naming schemes aren't conventional yeah. no you know as long as they don't call it the new switch i'll, I'll be happy <laughs> they might or they, they might new switch i'm upset. maybe switch deluxe god no please <laughs> Jesus. I, I, no. hey i i i felt i always i felt uh, like you know uh, i want to say that i did get the prediction right for switch light it's like a it's like a simple quick four letter word nintendo had used that branding before they did it again something quick which is why maybe something like deluxe wouldn't work because that's kind of like longer and they use that for their game so it's it's more confusing yeah um something like like i've said like plus would work pro would work but that's that's a sony yeah, thing so yeah um i mean it's not just right. a sony thing like iphone has like their iphone 11 pro and stuff but uh i think in terms of the gaming space you know that's what sony does um but anyway yeah the, the name is not really that big of a deal. Uh, I just want to point out that, hey, if, if there is a Switch Plus coming out in March, having 3D World plus Bowser's Fury kind of works out pretty well. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, so, but it's it just kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of pinpoint what's going to happen here. But I, I want to, I guess, move a little bit away from the Zelda stuff. Or it could still be Zelda, but I just want to revisit this question. Because they, we don't know... Do you guys agree with me, at least, that because the Mario Remasters are coming... Or 3D, World, uh, 3D All-Stars is coming out this September. That does suggest there's at least one more announcement coming, either for November or December, from Nintendo. Uh, I do think there could be another announcement. Although, whether or not it is a big one i'm not quite sold on because mm -hmm. well, i can see them yeah. i can see them treating 3d all-stars as their big release even though it's in september and yeah. them just filling november with maybe one or two smaller scale things yeah and when i mean smaller scale i don't mean like you know indies i mean you know a full retail release game just not necessarily you know their next big franchise release or something yeah like i don't expect breath I, th at this stage i don't expect I, I wish originally did but at this stage i don't think breath of the wild 2 is coming out i don't it's definitely not mario odyssey 2 nintendo would 100 percent would have announced that during the mario direct if they had a plan for that um so you know it's not that like, do you think it would be another remaster? Do you think it would actually be, like, a new original game? Or like, maybe it could be something smaller. Um, it could be... I think it could range from anything that's published by Nintendo. Specifically. Because we still... Again, wasn't Bravely Default 2 and No More Heroes supposed to release this year? Yeah. yeah. And that could that could have been impacted, yeah. and maybe yeah. they could... Technically, No More Heroes impacted. isn't being published by Nintendo, but I still have a hope it comes out this year. True, true. Yeah. Right. But they definitely have been pushing it more so than... Yeah, there's definitely some sort of deal there. Absolutely. Um, right. Like, and, and, Nintendo, and Nintendo fans would be excited about that. Like, I, I would... If that happens, I think that there will be some marketing for that. For sure. Especially, like, if... Like, a great idea would be for Travis Touchdown to be a Smash character. And you have that DLC come out this year. And you also have No More Heroes 3 come out this year. Like, that would just work... Marketing-wise, would work out beautifully. You know? Right, yeah. And and I think that's kind of the most I expect it to be. I mean, if it's any bigger than that, then don't get me wrong. I would love that. But I'm also a huge fan of No More Heroes, so I'm kind of just hoping No More Heroes anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, if from what I see 
from Nintendo in terms of how they're treating this year, how they're treating Mario this year and this whole anniversary. Um, I kind of just expect them to release games in November that maybe they necessarily didn't even make but more so have a close relationship with. Well, like, there, really deep into there, there is another yeah. thing, another wrinkle here, and Dumo suggested this last week, and it's very mm -hmm. exciting. I don't expect it this soon, but there are the rumors that Monster Hunter for Switch will be announced this month. That's one of Nintendo's biggest third-party uh, games that they have on the system. This would be one built ground up for the Switch using the re-engine. So this would be something sick. Like, this would be really, really cool. Um, and it's it's a huge seller in Japan. Um, and it's, Monster Hunter's gotten more popular over here in the States. That would be, a for me personally, that would be an amazing November-December game. Uh, I don't expect that, mainly because I think it's just too soon. Um, like, it's one thing for Nintendo to drop a trailer and say, hey, this is coming out a month or two from now. But it's another thing for a third-party company to do that. You know, even if it's like a, a third, even if, even if it's getting like that Nintendo backing, like it's getting published by Nintendo and they're helping out with it. I still don't think I, it's a little different. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I kind of expect Monster Hunter. I do believe it's real and suppose it's getting announced around Tokyo Game Show this month. I think that's very likely. I just don't think it's coming out this year. I think it's probably coming out next year, especially with the Switch revision coming out next year and how Monster Hunter is great for portable systems. I feel like Nintendo's going to want that to come out close to this Switch revision release. So, um, I, yeah, I don't expect it this year, but I think it's an option. Right. I, I do think that if it is announced, it's definitely not going to be a this year thing. Yeah. I feel like if whenever we see a game announced at Tokyo Game Show, that typically tells us that the West is going to get that significantly later, usually. Uh, yeah, I hope that they what they do is it's like a it's like a worldwide release. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but you know. I think uh, Monster Hunter World had like a wasn't Monster Hunter World, World a worldwide release? The, huh? I know it was it wasn't announced at TGS, was it? I I remember that being announced at like a PlayStation. Uh, Oh, man, sure. so maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I feel that I don't see it. Like, I, I do think it will happen eventually, a Monster Hunter Switch title. I do think that's very likely. I just wonder, did they specify if it's going to be a core game? Because I don't want, like, a Monster Hunter Stories kind of spin-off title situation. Wait, say it, again. Case, say it again. Say it again. Um, it's... I'm, it, is it going to be a Monster Hunter Monster Hunter core title? Um, like a my impression story? is but there's we don't know for certain, but my impression is that this would be like the Monster Hunter game that we've been waiting for. for right. Switch. Like you know how They've like for years saying... the, the Wii and the 3DS had built ground up built Monster Hunter games for those systems. This would be that. That's my impression. Obviously, I mean, that's what I expect. If this is true, right? It's being They're made with the re-engine. They specifically so. adapted the RE engine that they use for Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 3. That super, super advanced, like their next-gen engine that they've been using for their biggest AAA games. They're adapting that a specialized version to work for Nintendo for this game and for future projects. So yeah, I think it would definitely be a, a mainline release. They wouldn't do that for some side project. Okay. All right, yeah. So if that's the case, it, I, I, I believe that it'll happen eventually. I just don't see it anytime soon. I think that's probably gonna be the next year title, if anything. Um, because when I think TGS, I think of game gets announced and then gets localized later, or gets announced and kind of released later down the line. That may, yeah. maybe my perception of TGS is totally different than what it actually is. But I don't typically remember a game being announced at Tokyo Game Show and releasing in the West very, very soon. Not that I could think of. Yeah, so that, that's how I think about it. I think it's likely, I just don't know about how soon. Uh, well, from I what think... I'm looking, seeing a Monster Hunter World, it does seem that it released the same time in the major markets. So Right, but when was it announced is what I'm thinking When about. was it announced? Right, because I think okay, yeah, I I'll look that up next. I just wanted to see if like the precedent has been set for E3, worldwide releases. It? Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I think Monster Hunter World was announced at a Western yeah. June 12, like, 2017. Right. That's at E3. Yeah, so right. it was an yeah, E3 so... announcement. Um, right, 
So I, 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 so I remember okay, seeing so. the announcement. I definitely don't watch Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> Um, but that, there isn't gonna be, like, a... Is there gonna be, like, a Tokyo game show, or just, like... Because... You know what I mean? Like, I... it's pandemic time. Like, are they actually gonna gather at an oh. event, or is it just gonna be, like, a suit? Oh, you know no, what I mean? Like, I doubt they'll have an event, but they'll... It'll probably just be, like, a online presentation. Yeah, yeah where people... Okay. Hmm. I don't know. It's just tough. Tough to say how, how it's gonna shake out. I, yeah. I think the most likely scenario is that you'll see it get announced at Tokyo Game Show. It will be a Switch title. All of that would be true, just in terms of how soon it's just don't expect it to release this year. I think it's a yeah. year yeah. thing. I, I agree with that. Um, I'm optimistic that it will be... It, we won't have to wait that long for it to come to other markets besides Japan. I like If, I, if Monster Hunter World was already doing worldwide releases... I hope they do something similar for Switch. In fact, I would say that this Monster Hunter game has the potential to be a much bigger deal than Monster Hunter World because the Switch is like the ideal platform for Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter has always thrived yeah. on mobile platforms and the Switch is like the best mobile platform ever. <laughs> so, mm. you know, there's a World lot of potential releases there. releases are becoming a lot more common while non-worldwide releases are becoming exceptionally rare these days. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't doubt that it'd have a worldwide yeah, release. Yeah, I feel like Capcom's not going to regress. I think they're going to maintain this mm. this idea. And this is a few years afterwards, so... Uh, I think... I, I, yeah. I What'd do you say? think that worldwide releases will happen. I just feel it's not... Like, just generally speaking, it's not going to release so later. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, we agree. I, I don't expect it to be announced to come out this year. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, piggybacking off your idea that maybe it's something, but it's not like in house developed by Nintendo. It's some sort of third party uh, collaboration right. they have. Um, I do remember Honestly... there was some murmurings of a Splatoon spinoff. Um, uh, maybe that. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, that would be cool. I wonder what um, that would look like. Well,. My idea for Splatoon spinoff would be basically a dedicated horde mode. You just basically expand upon Salmon Run. Mm. You guys remember that concept art? Just add DLC to Splatoon 2. Well, to add more to Salmon he, Run. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that is that DLC is not as insignificant as a brand new retail release game for November. Right. That that's it. I'm, that's all I'm getting. I at. just don't think. Um. That they, I don't see why they would release. I understand that you, that you know the point that we need our need some like dedicated release for November, but I just don't think Splatoon two spinoff is it. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't think. That yeah, they I mean need it could be. That. Um, so is there a way? I I don't know if I created a way for you guys to see. So Brandon, I I know you commented on my video earlier in the week. But you know how I've created like a di like different prediction sets now. Like I have my conservative expectations mm -hmm. and my like I'm, I'm I'm like sort of like slowly updating this like with the different videos. I'm gonna try and share my most recent one on the stream. Um, right. Okay, if you just I... send, can you send the image into the R chat so we can see it then? No. Um. I mean, we could just go and watch the stream. It's just kind of behind. No, I'm gonna send it to you. It's just I have to. Can I send it to you guys on Twitter? Because that way I don't have to mess with the video yeah, call. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, you know, I just want to point out, guys, this is just like something that I'm sort of playing around with in terms of trying to like pinpoint when things are going to happen. It's not like this is just my own thinking. I don't really know what's happening, right? Um, but let me let me message you guys the image real quick. So I'll, I'll, I'll you know just give me like ten hours and then you'll you'll have it. Uh, at this point, we could just caught up to the stream. You're right, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 providing the goods. All right, so you guys should have the image now. Yeah. And I think it should be visible for people on the stream because I just put it straight over everything, so I think it's visible. Um, but yeah. Uh, so like. This is kind of like, so you see, I have my conservative expectations and then my optimistic expectations. Like the bottom one's like, hey, this is like best case scenario. Like this would be amazing sort of thing. The top is like maybe not amazing, but if you look at the way this year's gone, it kind of line up with what's, what's been happening, you know? So like, 
I feel like there's gotta be something for November. It would be really ideal if Skyward Swords had like a November game. They have Bravely Default 2 for December. They open things up with Pokemon Snap in January. Then obviously 3D World Deluxe is confirmed for February. And then Breath of the Wild. This is like a, an amazing lineup, I think, that probably isn't happening. You know? Um, and because of the pandemic, at this stage, I, I'm a, I am concerned that Breath of the Wild 2 won't make it out for like a March release. So maybe instead, when Nintendo has to celebrate the Zelda's 35th anniversary initially, a Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild 2 comes out later in the year. But I still have like a question mark for like what comes out this November. I feel like there's got to be something else. Right. Yeah, honestly though, I think Nintendo could get away with having either really the Default 2 or No More Heroes 3 be the November game. Yeah. 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 Especially if they have, like, Bravely Default 2, since it's Nintendo published that in November, then No More Heroes 3 in December. I think that would be a decent lineup. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... I think it would ultimately be a conclusion to a disappointing year, <laughs> which might sound harsh, <laughs> but it's I could facts, see it. Though. I could see it. I... My, my thing is that I just have a hard time believing that it's just November is the biggest sales period of the year. I, I just have a hard time seeing Nintendo not have something else. And I guess they also have the Crown Tundra. So it's the Crown Tundra DLC in conjunction with Bravely Default 2 for November, right? So, you know, that's... I don't... I don't know. I'm going to take the image off the screen now, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's. I think it's tricky. Uh, it could be just Bravely Default 2. Some people think Bravely Default 2 is delayed until until next year, but they still haven't clarified that. So, I I don't know. All right. It's kind of tough. Right. I mean, that that could be the case for both of the Bravely Default and Normal Heroes. Like mm -hmm. they could just release in January for all we know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that wouldn't be too far it, off. Right. Yeah. It really just depends on how much this. Uh, pandemic affected them. Like, if it didn't affect them that much, I can see it being November. If not, I can see January being very realistic. Right. And we have no part. idea when they were meant to come out either. These didn't right. have to be initially holiday games. They could have been mid-summer games, for all we know. Like, Bravely Default 2 Square Enix, they, they, you know, yeah, RPGs and stuff do well, like, late summertime. I so would have expected have it trying to push around August or September. Yeah, I would have expected it around now. Um, the August or September period, um, mm. or even July, like you know, like or somewhere in yeah. that window is when I expected it. Um, so if you give it like that four month delay, you know, let's let's say the latest it would have come out is, is September, you know, October, November, December. Like it does put it around December, January, you know, kind of depending on on that. So there's that. Not to mention that when the um, what you call it when the demo was put out for it the feedback was apparently pretty harsh so that may have led to some mm. significant changes put into the game they could have caused delays uh, potentially yeah, or you know when they put out the demo they had that expectation and they knew that there was going to be that work and that was already sort of a part of their plan to still have it fit into the 2020 you know uh, the point is these different things between could cause the delays. demo and release for octopath i don't remember i think it was like half a year let me let me look that up real quick. Octopath, Traveler. Mm -hmm. and, and when did we get the demo for Brave the Default 2? That was what, like May something? Well, Octopath Traveler came out July 2018, but the demo. I'm trying to look it up, but my typing ability has gone right. to nothing because I'm using one hand. Huh. It's hard to find the information on small things like this sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing like a lot of YouTube videos that popped up in June, even though the game came out in July. That feels like too. I don't. I don't. I think it was right at least me. a few months beforehand. Yeah. I don't think it was that long. Unless this is like a demo that was not related. Was within half a year, I think. 
And they did actually do the changes that people, a lot of the changes people suggested. trying to i guess maybe it was june 2018 maybe it was only a month i caught a switch prologue demo release date. i feel like it was like three months okay the the octobile traveler prologue demo was released on june 14th 2018 so it was june june 14th 2018 okay and apparently the game came out a month later july july 2018 july 13 2018 so that's a month that's yeah. weird. Uh, I mean, hmm. I guess they could have. Maybe that prologue demo wasn't meant for like to for testing. Yeah. That that's the difference though, right? And that that I guess that that's the back. thing. Like, because there was Damon X Mock in it where they did that with, and that wasn't meant for adjustments. This prologue demo wasn't like an adjustment thing. It was hey, just get it. It's like, just to get people like, to, to, to try it out, right? See the game, yeah, try it out. They did the same thing with Dragon Quest XI S actually as well. So that's a little different. Um, Damon X Machina though, I think that's, that might be an interesting comparison. Granted, different company, different developer, but when was that? I think that that's... Yeah. Um, the Bravely Default uh, 2, was that specifically meant for feedback? I don't remember. No, that's what I'm getting at here. Um, the pro it was just a prologue demo um, for uh, oh for Bravely Fall 2. I do th it, it was a feedback yeah. thing. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm trying to get a, a release date for the Damon X Machina demo. I'm almost. I'm very confident the Octopath Traveler had more than one demo. I, I feel maybe you're right. Feel, yeah, I'm pretty confident because I'm I'm looking. Let me see. I'm, I'm googling it now, and I see that there's a video from Nintendo UK from January 30th talking about Project Octopath Traveler demo survey feedback. Yeah, so, I, I remember okay. there being a yeah. feedback part. So yeah, they had so multiple think, demos. So and it's, it sounds like more like six months then. Right. Yeah. They probably yeah. they had one demo for feedback, and I guess they had one demo with the feedback right. I guess we implemented, and that was more of like a, a demo for yeah. the Okay. Version. In in the chat, um, I mean we we can clarify this and see if that's true. I'm seeing uh, if people uh, in the chat have. Yeah. No. They're saying uh, March 26 is when Brave the Default 2's uh, demo was available. So um, six months after that, you got, to, you know, uh, April, May, June. July. September. Yeah. I think maybe they wanted to have it released in September. That might have. That that's right. what makes sense to me. But you know, yeah. if there was. DE Fox is confirming like, as well that Octopath had two demos. Things, then, uh, yeah. Maybe they. Uh, yeah, I remember playing both of them too. Yeah. Um. Maybe they. Uh, maybe they want to delay it further to fix all the changes. I didn't play the demo. I have no idea what people have complained about. So maybe it's something that's not like super huge to fix. I don't know. I'm not familiar on what exactly people were talking about with the Bravely Default 2 demo. I know I wasn't really into it as much as I thought I was going to. Like, I thought it looked really pretty. I, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love it. Style. Of, right, yeah. But in terms, square, of, think so. True. <laughs> so, but in terms of like the mechanics i just wasn't feeling it as much as i thought i would yeah Which i didn't actually weird, play the demo they either do make very good rpg but so. i'll say timing wise let's say the sixth month window so that would put it around september right but you also attribute a three to four month delay because of the pandemic that puts it in the december january slot so that makes sense to me um i i guess at this stage i'll hope for december but i i guess it, it what it really suggests, and of course, we don't really know how much the delays cause. You know, this is this is there's a lot of wiggle room here because we we don't know yeah. if they were gonna initially have a six month window. It may have been longer, and we don't know how much the pandemic may have caused in delay. Uh, there's a lot of different, and there's also just marketing. Like maybe they just don't want to have it come out then. You know, um, so it's hard to say for sure. But just based off our our speculative timing here, I do feel like it fits the December January period. Which doesn't line up with November, <laughs> so just saying, I feel like November has got to have something else. But um, 
I don't know. I my my gut tells me that Bravely Default 2 wouldn't cut it for November, and I'll say that um, even though the year was starting to look a little bleak, we still got the Mario remasters in September. We're getting them this September. Like it was starting to look like we would go a three month window without a published Nintendo game, but then I was like, nope, here it is, two weeks beforehand. So we yeah. only skipped one month really, and this part of the year is the biggest sales period of the year. I feel like it makes more sense, like, if they're going to have any part of the year that's going to have consecutive releases, it's going to be the end of the year, especially after Nintendo has had months to recover from the initial pandemic delays. So, yeah, true. Um, I'm, you can't, you can't yeah. think their initial plans were to have just months with nothing. Yeah. Like, the, that that was probably due to delay. So I just want to point out. By now, we should be getting back on track, or at least close to getting back on track. Yeah. Um, so but, the games that were supposed to be coming out, say, like, starting uh, June and July, are going to be coming out, you know, now, or in a few months. Yeah. Um, so, if we, if we look at what we have so far, we have 3D All-Stars for September, and then October, I don't really feel like we should count the Mario Kart Live Circuit thing, uh, but it's coming out in October alongside Pippin 3 Deluxe, and also Cadence of Hyrule re-release. All of that is being published by Nintendo. So all smaller stuff, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I would say is the largest thing there. Um, but it's, it's nothing that's like a big brand new original game, right? Uh, yeah. And then obviously the 3D All-Stars is also just three old games packaged together with some minimal enhancements. So those are like the, the September, October month. I feel like Nintendo should try and find a way to get at least one like original product out to end the year. And again, I, I agree uh, to what you said earlier, Shifty. Like, it, it, it probably won't be like a Breath of the Wild 2 or Mario Odyssey. Like, nothing suit that. Not, not like a triple A thing, but something there. Um, the Crown Tundra DLC does help them a little bit for November, but I don't think they can rely on just DLC for, for that holiday period. Uh, Bravely Default 2 mm. could fit into December, maybe November. My personal gut says it's something else, though. Um. I feel like Skyward, even though Skyward Sword's not an original game, Skyward Sword would work. Like, in terms of sales, right. it's like, if they need... on the shelf yeah. that's yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but, again, it's still not, like, an original game. But maybe they just have really default to in the Crown Tundra DLC for that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible they could just be all that. And even if we don't consider mario kart to be big they might look at it that way they might be hoping that it does well enough for them maybe you're right considering, you know a yeah. higher price tag on it yeah uh, i mean yeah. that's fair because um the usually um nintendo's releases are october and, and december and they leave november for pokemon um especially now that it's all on one platform so, like, Let's Go was in November, Sword and Shield was in November, the Smash was in December, uh, Odyssey and Luigi's Match were in October. Like, they, they kind of space it out, out around Pokemon. But the problem this year is that it's a Crown Tundra is, is DLC. Like, there is no, like, physical mm -hmm. release for Pokemon this year. So, uh, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe they yeah. do release an, like, ultimate version of Sword and Shield that has all the DLC included. And that's what they have as their November game. They didn't do it for the Isle of Armor, but next, with the DLC but, being concluding. Yeah, that was half, yeah. yeah, this is when the DLC will actually be done, though. Yeah. Maybe that's what they, they say. You know, we can't get out of the new game. Maybe they can't, you know? It's possible yeah. they just can't. Yeah. yeah. And they say, you know, we have this DLC. Pokemon sells really well. Just having it in a physical package where if somebody who... You know, doesn't have the game can buy it all in one package, is good enough for their physical release for November. Could be, yeah, that for sure. Um, yeah, but I mean, I feel like I don't want to go in circles here. I feel like we've done a little yeah. bit of circles on it. Um, we don't know. Uh, I do expect more announcements for Nintendo this year, uh, which I guess brings me to I guess one more final talking point. Unless there's anything else you guys want to bring up, is there anything else you guys want to bring up? No. The only thing I could think of for November is maybe just a bunch of third-party stuff. Because we had, yeah, yeah, we've we had still don't have Doom Eternal. Right. Yeah, like, we've had months before where it was just a bunch of third-party games and not 
Nintendo anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, I think I think happens. that's that's conceivable. Uh, again, if we get Bravely Default Two, No More Heroes Three, and like Doom Eternal, all to close out this year, I think that's okay considering everything else. Especially if twenty twenty one is going to be like a really strong period, I can see that. Um, but uh, I guess you know the other thing that is that we should maybe talk a little bit about is like a actual general Nintendo Direct because mm -hmm. this Mario Direct is like the closest thing we've gotten to a general Nintendo Direct in a while, and it's still not a general Nintendo Direct. It's more like a mini. It's it's just, it's a Mario Direct. And there wasn't like any big, the most original release thing was the Mario Kart Live Circuit thing. And that's more of a toys to life thing as opposed to an actual original, like, you know, ground up right. in AAA Nintendo game. Um, so like, it, I wonder, you know, are we going to see that general direct with the Mario announcements out of the way? There isn't probably, there probably isn't really any need um, to have that anytime soon i'm thinking like at this stage yeah to have a full maybe, maybe an nintendo direct mini but like a full nintendo direct i don't really see that happening unless it's like unless, really just to talk about all about next year yeah unless in my opinion unless they have breath of the wild 2 planned for like march i don't see why they would have a general direct now yeah but they could still have it planned for march and have the direct come out in january i guess but I feel like, so I mean, Breath of, like Zelda in general, like they want to talk about way before like their other games. Like Zelda's like their one time that they break the rule of like announcing something really close to release. Um, other than obviously uh, Metroid Prime Four, but that was a completely different special situation. Yeah. Um, with the Metroid series and random um, thing about that. And all that, I want to point out Metroid's anniversary is next year. Um. And while I don't expect Metroid Prime 4 to come out next year, considering that supposedly both a 2D Metroid and Prime Trilogy have also been in the works on top of Prime 4, I feel like we're definitely going to get some sort of Metroid release to coincide with the 35th anniversary. Especially if Nintendo does like continue this trend of having some sort of collection to come out for these franchises. Like If they do, if they do some sort of Zelda collection, then I feel like this Metroid anniversary is going to finally be the time to get Prime Trilogy. Finally. I don't see why not. I mean, that's kind of the <laughs> the easiest one of them all um, as far as Mario, Zelda, and, and Metroid go because they've already done the triple pack. Like, they have all the work done, so if they just want to release that in 1080p with some, you know, control improvements or changes to fit with the Switch, then, you know, they could do that. Would I be disappointed that they're not remastering each game? Hell yes. But <laughs> would that be something that Nintendo would totally do because they like to put a minimum effort into things? Uh, yeah. Yeah, um... I would say, though, that, like, having, like, pro controller support, like, basically the 3D All-Stars treatment for, for Prime Trilogy would be great. Like, that would be great, because, like, I mean, Prime would, I think the game would just look so much better with just, with, they don't have to do that much to make the games look that much better. You know, like, like, they can maybe just lighting a little bit, but just really cleaning up the textures and putting it in 1080p would do so much for, for those games. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just for the record, the, the anniversary for Metroid is August, which I think would be the perfect time to release a Metroid Prime Trilogy HD, because it's not something that I think would warrant a holiday release, but I also don't see it coming early this year. Like, I feel like August is... Yeah, I see that happening. Yeah, I can see that, although I part of me also makes me wonder if they'll even f focus on a Metroid anniversary. Yeah, no. Oh, so, like, there's an, a zero anniversary coming up. I think best case scenario for that, we get a tweet. Right. Best yeah, case but, scenario. We also don't have the next F-Zero installment announced, and it's not right. being hyped up. There's no like, games for it, They're hyping up yeah. Metroid Prime 4, and they have been since 2017, so... Like, See, they, they came out, and I, were, like, that was in the first E3 for the Switch for, like made a big deal about metroid i think that's a really good point returns. because 
Prime Trilogy has the opportunity to educate people about the Metroid franchise, bring it back to mm-hmm. the attention of gamers. Like the idea for Prime Trilogy is that it's going to come out, people are going to play it, get to know Metroid Prime, and that's going to all lend itself towards like Metroid Prime 4 being really successful. So they could use like a sort of like Metroid anniversary situation to educate people about the history of Metroid, get people to know the franchise, have Prime Trilogy, maybe tease Prime 4, although I would hope they would just do that at E3, but I don't even know if that's happening at this stage. Um, point is though, I it makes sense. So um, because of that, because that they, they need to create an awareness for it because they want to build for Prime 4. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, I would agree with the shifty, like they're just not like, going to do it. Metroid's been dead for a while but they definitely seem to want to bring it back they released uh, Re- uh return of samus or samus Re- samus returns yeah. for the 3ds they made a huge deal about metroid prime 4 and then they also made a big deal about its delay which they didn't have to do at all because they never announced a release date for that game they could have just softly restarted it and released it whenever they needed to they absolutely did not have to talk about that so they definitely seem to be focusing on Metroid as, as a bigger thing, unlike their other franchises with they're just leaving dead. So I don't think it's in the same thing. I think they do want to bring back Metroid because I think it has the potential. I mean, it always scores super well. People always love the game. It, so has, it just hasn't it, gone that audience. It has the potential to be like a Mario or Zelda in terms of like that AAA release sort of thing. Um, yeah. Like, and the interesting part thing about it, and I hope it would be cool if Nintendo were to even talk about this if they ever do like some sort of Metroid anniversary celebration, is to outline how initially on the NES, Mario, Zelda, and Metroid, like design wise, were kind of linked. Like you had you had um, the Mario, and then they had Zelda, which are kind of like two opposite sort of play styles, and then Metroid was sort of like, what else can we do with that? Like. Uh, how can we sort of create a new style of gameplay? Like so, it, it was kind of like a, a middle ground between those two in terms of gameplay. Not to mention naming wise, it was interesting because you had um, the original Mario was, you know, was Donkey Kong, right? And that was named after the like the villain. Um, Zelda was named after the princess, and Metroid was like it's, it's not named after the main character or the main bad guy. It's like named after it's like both the villain and a good you know what i mean like there, there's like some sort yeah. of interplay with the naming here like they didn't just want to call it samus um so there, there's like a history there is a connection there um in terms of like nintendo's premier single player experiences like if you were to tell me what are nintendo's best um single player uh games of all time the three franchises that are to come up are going to be mario zelda and metroid in terms of like this that single player sort of adventure experience that's what it is so i do think there's definitely potential there and i hope nintendo wants to outline that right i mean i hope they do because it's considering that the anniversaries are kind of shared in that same year i just don't want to see a situation of say zelda's anniversary kind of overshadowing metroid's uh side of things yeah right you gotta space it out a bit which is why maybe august is the perfect time yeah um because especially if they have something else for the holidays. The other interesting idea is that like, if my best case scenario expectations come to fruition, where we get like a scoured sword for like November or something, and they come out with Breath of the Wild 2 this March, they can get all of the 35th anniversary Zelda stuff done before the before the halfway point of 2021 conceivably. You know, like they could do that. Um, and then that leaves room for Metroid 35th anniversary celebrations that they wanted to do that as well. But I also don't think that they they don't have to make they don't even have to it, it go in as much with Metroid as they do with Mario. Yeah, it I don't expect be that. As big. It'd probably just be Prime Trilogy HD and maybe a 2D Metroid as well if they have that ready. Maybe if they have another remake ready or something. Yeah, they can like I don't even there. my thing is I don't even necessarily expect it to be like a huge campaign. But maybe just, yeah. like, they tweet out some things about the history of Metroid, and Prime Trilogy comes out in August, and maybe even has, like, a 35th anniversary Metroid thing. Like, I don't know. I, I think they, there's something there. And having both a 2D yeah. Metroid and Prime Trilogy, or like, the, the two different types of Metroid gameplays to come out in the same year, I think that's possible. Because at this point, I feel like Prime 4 is a, is a holiday 2022 sort of thing. Um, and if that's the case, I feel like 
we could see both 2D Metroid and Prime Trilogy come out this year. I I would love that, but I just don't know how likely that is. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, it's, it's really just speculation. The only thing that I have that is, like, tangible is that um, Mercury Steam, we haven't seen what they've been doing, and the last, like, big project they did was Samus Returns. That was in 2017. There were several interviews that talked about how there was an interest in continuing to work on that. And if you look at the game, there were teases about Fusion. And we've seen several rumors um, from credible mm -hmm. sources talking about how a 2D Metroid is in the works. Um, right. And, and so, isn't yeah. there interviews saying that they wanted to make Fusion originally? Yes. That was the game they wanted to make? Yes. So, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me if they did Samus Returns and then immediately started working on Fusion. Yeah, a f right. either like a fusion or a fusion sequel, um, which would be Metroid Five, basically. Uh, I I feel like there's that's enough reason to think that it's around the corner, given from it, information coming from supposed insiders who, for the record, were right about the Mario remasters and Paper Mario mm -hmm. and Pikmin Three. Um, so I right. think there's and definitely if credibility Trilogy there. H if Trilogy HD really is just more like the Mario collection where it's not really that big of an upgrade it's just like 1080p and controls it doesn't take that much time to make so it's been done supposedly really for get years that in for point. the anniversary and then yeah if you have four years later i feel like you should you should have this 2d uh metroid game done so you can put that in there as well yeah um right but obviously but we don't know what the plans are yeah we have no right. idea if they started working on that or if they even want to do that yeah. What were you going to say, right. Shifty? I, I was just going to say that if that's the case, that Mercury Steam possibly has been working this entire time and there has been this sort of... Um, uh, the, the trilogy has supposedly been done already and it's just kind of being... They're just waiting until it's closer to release for yeah, Prime like, 4. Yeah. Right, yeah. If that's the case, then... Yeah, I can see it likely they'll do that. I just wonder if marketing-wise they want to release it within the same year they're trying to have like a Zelda anniversary celebration, if that's the case. Well, I'll right. say this, like, does an anniversary celebration mean that Nintendo can't have other games come out? <laughs> you know, no, like, but, I, but in terms of, like, pushing the anniversary is what you're getting at. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. that's what I'm getting at. Like, I see them releasing it regardless. Like, if they had it ready and they wanted to release it at that point in time, they'll do it. You know, they'll release it and they're not going to Yeah, be well, another uh, anniversary time to stop it. Yeah. I guess the other right. thing is that they wouldn't push the anniversary celebration that much. But there would be maybe something to it, you know? Like, it wouldn't right. be, like, the Mario thing where it's a whole direct, but they at least... Like, I mean, I I'm thinking best-case scenario, it's just something with the branding of that game, you know? Like, it, like kind right. of like how, with Brandon, you pointed out the Skyward Sword had that 25th anniversary branding. Yeah. Something like that. And there is a lot of hype around the Metroid Prime name. You mentioned Metroid Prime on the internet, people go crazy, even though most people haven't even played the game. So announcing Metroid Prime HD, like... Imagine how much the internet will explode when Metroid Prime HD gets announced. And it doesn't even matter what it is. It could literally just be the the game, 1080p, this, the Wii version, just 1080p, Switch controls, bam. The internet would go insane. So I don't think Zelda would overshadow that. I think Zelda would have it. You know, obviously, people would be ridiculously excited for Zelda, but there's also a, a ridiculous amount of hype for Metroid and Metroid Prime for whatever reason i'm not even sure how that happened like how the the Met metro community really came together and got people who've never even like heard of metro prime to be hyped for that series i don't know how they did it but well props to them man. I, I think the thing is is that metroid has always had the quality and that nowadays because of the way the internet works and word of mouth over the internet people know about it now before yeah. people didn't really know about how good this game was supposed to be now people know like oh wait what do you mean this metroid prime is one of the highest rated games ever what do you mean it's like space zelda with shooting like what are you talking about like they see it there's that, that was it wasn't the case in 2002 or in 92 you know or not 91 i mean with super metroid like even though Super Metroid did pretty well uh for the time but you know it wasn't like mm -hmm. mario or zelda uh the word of mouth gives it that opportunity to really succeed like you see that with indie games nowadays things like that if the game is really good people who who are you know core gamers will will talk about it play it 
and they'll push that and then more the more casual people hear about them then they'll be like oh wait i hear this is really good like it, it's it's different now if a game is really good it's opportunity to succeed is far greater back as a, compared to like the past right I, if anything i i think mostly in the sense of will it be overshadowed marketing wise more so than like the people buying it because i feel that right. metroid i agree with brandon that metroid's name is a lot stronger now than it was before so if they release a brand new 2d metroid let's just say it's gonna sell like people are gonna buy it and they'll enjoy it and the internet's gonna lose their minds over it i just wonder if in terms of marketing specifically if nintendo will market it as like their big 35th anniversary metroid thing or if they rather have the year dedicated to this zelda celebration thing I'm gonna pose. Regardless, releasing it. I'm gonna pose an idea for you guys. 2D Metroid comes out this November, and they don't they, they don't really like do that much anniversary celebrations. It's just like on August they they have something for just about Prime Trilogy, but they have if they have 2D Metroid come out this November, think about that for a second. How? I I know it's like considering this Metroid, like why would Nintendo go with that? But if like they don't have like a major release, you know, if they're already, if they're already at a stage where they're really just considering having DLC be, be the release date or Bravely Default 2, at that point, if that's like what you got, if you have 2D Metroid available, you might as well do that instead. You know what I mean? Like if we're at that point where that's really what their options are, yeah. I think 2D Metroid would actually thrive because look at what's happened with Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing would not have been so successful. It's it would have been one of the best selling Switch games, period. And I'm not saying that it would have sold like several million this year for sure, but it would not have been the second best best selling Switch game already if it wasn't for the pandemic. So yeah. my point is is that considering how starved Nintendo fans are, especially the core Nintendo fan base that cares more about like the the action oriented kind of Nintendo games, which we haven't really gone too much of this year. If Nintendo puts out like a 2D Metroid sort of thing for November, they will sell so freaking well. And I think it would actually go over really well for the franchise because guess what that does? The game sells really well. It spreads the good name of Metroid to all the world. And it really kind of supports it for, you know, a, a, maybe a, a Metroid anniversary celebration with Prime Trilogy next, you know, next year in August, which then is a good opportunity to tell people people more about prime 4 you reveal prime 4 next year gameplay wise and it comes out holiday 2022 and it's a big deal you know like that's that that's a good so i know i understand it's more of a, a nice narrative as opposed to what will actually yeah. happen but yeah pretty much but uh i don't know man but it's I, not impossible i, I don't think it's impossible yeah. ready i think it's more possible if it was prime trilogy instead of a 2d metroid yeah. Because apparently Prime Trilogy's done. And that's apparently like the controversy or not the that's not the word I want. On the other hand though, Samus Returns was announced very, very close to release. It was like a month or two beforehand. And that was not in a weird pandemic time where they're announcing things two weeks <laughs> before they release. Um so yeah, I don't it, it's not impossible that the 2D uh, Metroid could just get like almost shadow dropped I mean, <laughs> like, yep here we go the 2d metroid comes out this month in november i mean if that's the case i'd be ecstatic <laughs> like i would be totally in love with that i would love that but that'd be three years if it is just a fusion remake and not a full new 2d metroid that's three years for a remake i feel like that's plenty of time it's actually like three and a half years because uh samus returns came out in like june or something mm -hmm. or, or july i think something like that right right I, I guess the idea is do we expect them to announce things two weeks prior for mm. many games like how many games do we expect them to do that for right i i don't have any expectations because nintendo's just been throwing them out the window this year right. so i i don't ex i i can't expect anything so i'm just like all the possibilities are on the table here they could they could have it come out the next day for all i know I you know, yeah, a lot has changed, but like the Mar Nintendo knew that we all knew about the Mario remasters, and Nintendo knew true. that we had money to spend for September because what's coming out in September that's like a big deal, you know? Like, like it, I don't think it, I can't think of anything. Literally nothing. Not at least not for my yeah. Switch, you know. Um, so I think um, 
like that was they could get away they're able to get away with it for what it was especially because it's not even like a brand new it's, there's not like a whole bunch of new content in the mar in 3d all-stars it's it's old games they're not they're not they're like basic remasters so they could get away with with it for that um i think everything else needs to have mm. like i mean but I'm, maybe I'm it's expect- trilogy hd and it's just, it's just a basic uh well they basic would have to port there they would have to, I, th- I think for everything else, it's got to be like a, like a two-month window. Because I haven't... It's still two months before uh, before November. Yeah. 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 Uh, There's another They're interesting thing that I think is then. worth noting, guys. We've had back-to-back weeks of Nintendo news. Like, like significant Nintendo announcements. This, this past week that happened was the Mario Direct. The week before that was the Partner Showcase. And the week before that was the Indie World Showcase. So, what if Nintendo's like, hey, Nintendo Direct Mini, not a partnership, like Mini, like, they, it's just like, a, it's just like four back-to-back weeks of Nintendo announcements, so that we, they know, they just put it all out there, this is what's going on for the rest of the year, in that, in that form. It would be nice. I do not expect that. I think this Mario no. Direct is probably <laughs> it, but... I mean, they could just literally release a trailer, though. I mean, they don't have to release that Actually, you know direct. what? Let me... They just want to talk about what's coming for the end of the year. They could announce a trailer too. They they could do another partner showcase though, because they seem to be kind of lenient with those. Because they did two in a row, didn't they? They, they were a month had apart. The showcase in between. Yeah. yeah, they were about a month apart. They were a month apart. Yeah. Um, pretty close to each other. I think so there I... was actually a week in between the indie direct and the second partner showcase of nothing. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So what if? partner because we got a partner showcase and another one a month between each other so how likely do you think it'll be that we get another partner showcase oh i definitely think, um, we're gonna I think this... yeah because i could see that happening again and that oh yeah i definitely think they're... go on stuff like play with no more heroes i'm yeah. not sure about that um the problem, know, because, it, like, oh. like it, I, I, it's totally conceivable. Totally could be the case because um, we've seen examples of it. Like, technically, Nintendo's publishing that physical release of Kingdom of Hyrule, so there is some precedent to have something Nintendo's publishing. So they could have Bravely Default too, which would still be like a are third party partner. Publishing partnership. Shin Megami Tensei. I don't think they are, um, but it's it's a huge release. It's a, something that's super cool that people have been waiting for for a very long time. And I, I guess I would play. I would put No More Heroes three in that category as well. So like, I don't disagree that it's, it's conceivable. I'm just, it. I don't know. Um, I guess it comes down to. It comes down to. Um, it's just hard to picture a partner showcase that I actually care about. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what makes it hard for me. I'm like, hmm. I don't know. I I see. If you were coming from my perspective, you could kind of see why I might say that, considering that one of my most anticipated Switch games is No More Heroes, and yeah. the first partner showcase gave us Shin Megami Tennessee Five. Yeah, what I think it comes down to is there being, if there's going to be a mini or a partner. Like, and when I say mini, I do not mean partner showcase. There is a distinction. There is Nintendo Direct Mini, and there's a Nintendo Direct Mini partner showcase. So, like, I, a mini I th- would mean Nintendo announces mixed in with third-party stuff. Um, a partner showcase isn't really that you know um mm-hmm. i do think Bravely default 2 and no more heroes 3 could be in there so like if there is nothing else coming out for this year besides maybe those then i agree that the partner showcase you know um and maybe that it's still that maybe it is still just partner showcases for the rest of the year and whatever's coming out say for november or december if it's not just Bravely default 2 is a trailer drop which by the way i do feel like if we go into October, um, I feel like Nintendo's gonna want to announce something, you know, like because everything but Mario that's been at least like a two month window. So we're in September now. Like, if there's something for November, we're maybe they should also announce yeah. that this month, you know? Right, right. And just for the record, like I googled Shin Megami Tensei Five. Apparently, it's being published with just Atlas. Atlas is doing it on the yeah. Own. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know that was shown off at the partner showcase so i think partner showcase could just be their way of showing third party or at least very closely affiliated maybe i don't right. know because yeah games on and down. it's a blurred lines situation yeah. yeah yeah so 
even if it's not shown off in a direct mini, I think a direct mini and a partner showcase can kind of both happen. Okay. Like, I don't think it necessarily needs to be one or the other, considering how lenient they seem to be with both of those. Yeah. Because they don't seem I to imagine... be like regular directs. Say it again. Yeah. I imagine it would just... I didn't hear you, Shifty. I was, I was saying that I don't see... Like, I don't think Nintendo treats partner showcases and mini directs the same way they treat regular directs. They seem to be more lenient. Considering partner showcases were one month apart from each other, I feel that that's something they are more willing to do more yeah. often. I think if it's a general Nintendo Direct, Nintendo's going to announce it in advance. Everything else they've been just sort of like just dropping out of nowhere. I think a Direct Mini is also falls under that category because they've done it before. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Brand, you were about to make a point. Yeah, uh, personally, I think they'll just drop a trailer for the November game they did after the Direct Mini for Paper Mario. Same, similar ish. Or so, situation with the Paper Mario, Mario was revealed in May. The Direct Mini was in March. So, it was two months later, basically. Um, I do not think Nintendo can wait two months from now to announce a November game. Literally November. Yeah, no, I feel I'm like... Saying this, I'm saying this month they would announce I, I, I think there's a potential a that this pattern we've seen how it's like week one week it's like it's been three back-to-back -back weeks of nintendo news there might be something else next week or this coming week i don't want to set that expectation i feel like we've gone enough to sort of hold us over for a little while so i don't think we need it right but yeah, maybe this is like nintendo's e3 replacement where they just sort of spread out announcements over the course of a month like maybe you know what i mean um and, 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 and yeah, Brian, you were talking about how, like, and since with the Mario remasters or 3D All Stars, yeah, they, they've changed. They, they set a whole new record in terms of like major release announcement to release window here. Two weeks is just ridiculous. Granted, it is like a minimal remaster, but it's still like something that has a lot of attention that people are gonna like. Right. It's in in terms of like having it be prepared. To be out in the market and promote it like they're only giving it two weeks and apparently it's just going to do amazingly well so yeah i think nintendo can get away with less than two months um so it doesn't have if if, if september if we go through all of september we still don't get something announced for november i don't think all is lost i but i also think that it can't be shorter than this mario situation i think this mario situation is, is a unique one i think if we get yeah. to the end of October without an announcement for something for November, I'm not expecting anything in November. I agree. Yeah, I, I feel that November most likely is something that they're gonna... It's, you're not gonna see something huge from Nintendo. It's gonna be something maybe, you know, the third parties that are closely affiliated. Mm -hmm. or maybe they're not even closely affiliated. It could just be a month for third parties to shine i guess if anything doom eternal uh, i feel like doom eternal yeah, would yeah. actually be a good thing to come out in november the yeah that could be situation that i can see that is similar to ish to the mario remaster and we keep calling them that let's just call them the 3d all-stars collection because they're, <laughs> they're, they're yeah. people like <laughs> they're not the 3d remasters that we we kind of expected so Let's, I don't want to call them that, especially since they have an actual name. But yeah. uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy HD is kind of the closest thing to that. If it is just basic uh, ports of the game in 1080p, and we've known known that that is a game that exists for so long that they could just literally... It, it's a similar situation. Now, we don't... The rumors have been less so for this year as much as they've just been done for a while and they'll release whenever they feel like it. No, but they still we, they still know we know that they're a thing for sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Um they're just waiting until Prime 4 is closer. I think it's I think I really do feel like it's all a part of like a big marketing push for leading up to Metro Prime 4. Uh, which is why I think that 35th anniversary thing really makes a lot of sense. Um but going to about Doom, um, Doom 2016 for Switch came out November 10th, 2017. So, right. and you know, they might want to do something I, similar for this year. I could be wrong, but I, I do remember, I don't know if it was the same uh, time 
span as Doom, but I remember there was a specific month around that same year where it was just constant third-party games releasing one after another. I think it was like Sonic Forces, LA Noir, um, Doom, mm. I believe, was one of them. It was a bunch of the games just coming out constantly, but it were all third-party. And I feel that we could see a, I guess, like a repeat of that in November, if that's yeah. the case. That's why I think a partner showcase is possible because they could get see... away with it with a partner showcase but i wonder if like they have a mini instead if in case there's like like that one or two nintendo games they want to talk mm. about too you know especially right, if there's yeah. the other here's the other thing we haven't really talked too much about yet i feel like we're getting really really close to a smash dlc announcement usually those happen during directs um so you know it's kind of interesting like will they just do like randomly say will they do basically what they did with for um the arms character except they won't tell us that it, there's an arms character They'll just say hey look here is a sakurai presents find out who it is and we won't know and that's going to invite hatred because people are going to go into it wanting something they don't know where they're, where they're going into it's kind of that that's that's the interesting thing about this um I would prefer it to be in a, in a, 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 like an actual direct, because there'll be several things that are announced there. Um, but I could see that maybe that's what happens next week. Like it's not a mini or anything like that. Just like Sakurai presents this week, you know. Which would if they did that, then I'd be I would be all in on the idea that Nintendo intentionally did this because and they want this to be like their, you know, like a, like a four week block of just sharing a bunch of really cool information about their plans for this year. Mm. Right. I mean, if they do decide to do some kind of Smash uh, related announcement, I could see that also happening in November. Because I feel you think wait. Oh, Pokemon... You think like, wait until November. Like... What's that? You think we'll wait all the way until November um, for another Smash character? Be honest. Uh, considering September, we're in September now. Maybe it depends. It really depends, because I, I don't know how I much... Mean, I don't know what's their original plans and what... Yeah, I mean, know, well, Min Min came out in June. It's already right. been four months, right? Am I... Right, I think... Yes? I think last no? year they had... June... Around E3, okay. they announced Banjo and Hero, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember everything correctly. So, they had two characters, and then by the end of that, they had... Both of them released, and I think there was another character, right? Or am I wrong? Uh, Terry was revealed in September last year. But he wasn't really, but he released. I think, was he, I think released? he released in November. Um, yeah, I think November. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so they could have. An... they gave them like two months around that, or after they to release. Right. Okay. So yeah, they could not. Like, I'm pretty confident our character is coming. I just don't know. I, I could see us. Mind. I could These see us waiting until November. Spaced out yeah. Than the last yeah. Pack because and they're, it's over two years instead of just one. Yeah, and I'll say right. that my math was terrible. June was not <laughs> was not four months ago. So, yeah, uh, that yeah, we would have was... to get to October before that's the case. Yeah. Um, True. And then you add on top of the pandemic thing, kind of keeping things. Yeah. Uh, delayed I, yeah, but I also work. feel like. Suppose like the way they worded the arms thing, like that was already delayed. Like I wonder how much more delay there's gonna be. You know what I mean? Like the way th they made it seem like the arms character is supposed to come out a lot sooner in the year already. So I just wonder, like, is everything just? I I my I I don't think if it has been delayed, it's that significant. But maybe it's not like the September, right? Like maybe it's like October or November. Like I think that's conceivable, but I, I think there has to be at least one more character before the end of the year. I'd yeah, honestly I be shocked if we're in December, we haven't heard anything yet. I I still expect some, I don't, I guess because we didn't get like a direct mini, it's um I mean, unlikely that we get a Smash character announced too soon. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, I, think I feel like it's about time though. though. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that we're going to see a character in some capacity. 
I just know that what Brent, because what Brendan mentioned, that the characters are going to be more spaced out this time around, considering there's a what, two year span. Yeah. And then add on top of that, the pandemic, the it's going to be a lot slower than people expect it to be. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine we're going to see one soon, just not when people expect it. I think it's going to be a little later than people want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking November. Maybe just yeah. oh. even. My that's the case. They have two of the their big game DLCs like released the same month. Maybe, and I mean, maybe that's all you need to do. But like, even if it comes out in in November, it doesn't mean they can't announce it sooner, though. You know? No, yeah I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it this month and then it released in November. They they typically give a month or two between the initial announcement of the character or the fact that a character is coming. Um, yeah. You know. So you'll probably get an announcement later this month if not october i think would be the latest yeah uh, october seems to be the latest i think they would announce it maybe we get maybe it, we get a direct october, mini in december october release. you know like what if we get a direct mini yeah, in october and that sort of like spells out the rest of the holiday the plans not the fiscal year just like until do they? I don't know if they have enough announcements for them to have an October mini and then well, just it's talk mini. about 2020. Well, yeah, but minis still usually have a pretty good amount of information. Um, I mean, they could still they could talk about um, Pikmin 3 again. They could Smash character November game, Bravely Default I think 2. They would at least go into like January. No more Heroes February, 3. Talk about the 3D World again. Yeah, they could talk about 3D World again. Um, if they have something planned for January, they could talk about that as well. Um, and if they have something planned for March, they could talk about. I mean, they they could go. I mean, you're right. They could go into the fiscal year. Uh, yeah, they could do that. Um, but I also feel like Breath of the Wild Two kind of feels like a general Nintendo Direct sort of. Yeah, I, that's what thing. I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, if Breath of the Wild Two is coming out in March, I definitely think there will be a full Nintendo Direct sometime before. That. Yeah, like soon. And because I don't think they're gonna announce. Breath of the Wild 2's release date two months beforehand. And the other thing to, to take into consideration here is that if the Switch revision reports are true, they're not going to talk about that until next year. They're not going to bastardize Switch sales this year by announcing a Switch revision. They're going to announce a Switch yeah. revision like a month or two in advance tops. Yeah, they did that with the light. It was, it yeah. was very close. Yeah. And the Switch light was like a, a side option. You know, not like it like, it like so it, right this thing right. might be kind of like more of like a premium switch you know so mm -hmm. at least that's what the report suggests right so um yeah i think uh we won't i don't think we're gonna get a full Nintendo direct i mean i don't think they would have a switch revision announced in a direct either they've never done that they've always done that separate from the directs so I don't think that impacts when they will talk about their games. No. The only thing that would somewhat impact it is if, if they do want to have like a Breath of the Wild 2 launching alongside of it. No, no, because the thing is, you I, when I, have we ever seen a situation where a new system comes out and they have like a branded version of it? Like, like, like I don't think they would announce a Zelda branded Switch revision. All right. They had the um, Pokemon Light, but that came out several months after the Light. Right, release. it came out afterwards, exactly. That's my point. So I feel like, um, if anything, what they would do is maybe... It, let's let's hypothetically say, like, Breath of the Wild 2 comes out somewhere between March and, like, June or July. And the Switch revision comes out during that period. They, they may come out, like, around the same time, if not even the same day. And they will be used to sort of push each other. Um, I think if they would want to have, like, a Zelda switch plus or whatever like bundle version that would be like a holiday announcement you know i could see that i mean that can make, make, makes a lot of sense to me actually yeah i can kind of see that i don't know if they would hmm i i because pokemon they had the bundle but it launched when pokemon launched so Zelda's not launching in in the holidays, I don't see why you'd have a Zelda bundle after Zelda's already out. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Another interesting you're thing. you going to get people who kind of wait to buy both until the bundle releases. Here's another they interesting thing. Uh, the game. 
Say it again. So they could release the bundle before the game. True, and have the game uh, activate yeah. later. They've done that before. Yeah. They did it for Smash, and they did it for something else. I'm forgetting. Yeah. yeah. They, they also place. don't have to do a bundle. Um, <laughs> everyone yeah, was don't. convinced that there'd be some sort of Switch bundle with 3D All Stars. There's none of that. I actually didn't hear. I I didn't hear people talking about that. That there was, was there was at least some discussion on it, um, and that's not happening. That was never something I really considered, but yeah. Well, just like, you know, you normally want to have some sort of bundle. Like, usually they come up with something on most years. Uh, there's nothing like that. I mean, like, I guess it's possible. Like, what if we get, like, a Switch price drop this year to, to like, give the Switch a bit more of an edge with next generation systems? Like, I think that's a good idea. I don't idea. think they'll drop the Switch's price unless like the Switch Pro came out or Plus came out and it was like 350 Well, and maybe they want to drop the price. Well, that's the thing. Like, what if... Do you think they would drop the price for the base Switch a couple months before a Switch revision is announced? Or would they do it when it's announced? I think they'd probably do it when it's Okay. Because you don't really need to lower the price of your console until you have other hardware that you know makes the the need you know well why the would, need you lower the, it before you even announce so the fact that the need a, i'm uh, getting at here is the next generation systems like if they think that'll push sales a little bit more they I might the, do it i think the other the thing to consider the next though generation systems are gonna be really expensive like they might even be twice as much as the 300 then they might just be able to get away with, with that and yeah. you could very well be right uh sales this year have been so strong like it doesn't, they're not really trending downwards. So that's usually when a price drop is announced, when they start to trend downwards and they want to pick that up. That's when right. that that's usually happens. So I would, I'm just you know bring up possibilities here. I would, I'm inclined to agree that there won't be a price drop for that reason. But we we have to take this into consideration though. Unemployment rates have been very high, um, and maybe we haven't felt the full effects in terms of like game sales yet, but. That's going to sort of build upon each other. Maybe people won't have that much money to spend for this holiday season. And one thing to consider is price drops could make that, you know, ease that blow a little bit. Especially if, like, yeah. the next generation systems come, that come out and that price point really hurts. Especially for people who don't have as much money this year. Maybe Nintendo's like, oh, bam, we'll, we'll slash the price. Like, that's a really good... Like, especially if you don't have, like, strong software to push it, one way to push sales, there's a price drop if you don't have strong software. Yeah. Well, how, how much of a price drop are you expect? Like, hoping? Uh, or maybe top, not hoping, but would expect. That's probably, like, 50 bucks. Top, yeah, I, I would 50. Like, that. that's it. Down so you would 50. see, hypothetically, you would see the base switch 250, the light to stay 200, or would the light also be affected? I would have... I think the light they can get it down to 150. I don't see why not. Okay. But they know, might I... just be like, yeah, 200. Yeah, still 200. Maybe, or maybe I mean, like, they, they maybe like 179. Yes, pretty quickly. Maybe 179. Like 180. Yeah, they might go for that 178, uh, 179 price point like they did with the the new 3ds because that that one launched I think for 200 and they like a year later they dropped the price down to like 180. I see Riza Hydra is saying that knowing Nintendo's pattern, it'd be a month exact going off of 3DS. They drop them, yeah, they, they, well, I mean, that's interesting, but the, I guess the distinguishing factor here though is that if they wanted to like push more sales for the holidays and with next generation systems and potentially a lack of a killer app for November or December, a price drop maybe comes a little bit sooner. Uh, Again, I'm just bringing it up as a possibility. I don't. If sales don't trend downwards, they're not going to drop the price. I don't see that happening. Right. I guess I'm just trying to imagine, like, what would the price structure be for all three right. systems? Right. Um, like well, I think part of the problem is that I, I don't think it's set yet either. Like, right. I think if Nintendo has a plan about releasing the system, I, I still mm -hmm. think they don't know about the price because they're probably paying attention to the sales trends and sort of reacting to it you know yeah um, i think if you are going to lower the base switches price though you need to lower the light otherwise 
the light kind of loses its value because it is only half of the Switch's functionality. And if it's only, say, 50 to $70 cheaper, it's going to start being something that's not really worth it, you know? It's like, why wouldn't you just yeah. buy the Switch to so, get both functionalities? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess if it's less than $100, that that does create an issue with that. I see your point. Uh, $149.99 would be sick for a Switch Lite. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think... And, and I guess, you know, that that's the thing, though. Like, I guess they don't... Um, they're not at that point yet where they need to do that. Because sales haven't started trending downwards. We'll see what happens as yeah. we get closer to the holidays. Uh, so I would say probably not. But um, when a Switch revision is announced next year, though, that also matters. Like, I have a hard time yeah. seeing Nintendo un launching a $400 system. Unless no. this is, like, something that offers, like, 4K visuals, you know? Yeah, it'd um, need to be a big boost. Yeah. They might do $349.99, though, if it's meant to be, like, a, like a deluxe yeah. version of the Switch. Like, maybe what they could do is, like, 150 99. 250 350 Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. That could be good. Yeah. Just a hundred dollars yeah. in between. That gives them reason for the other versions to exist. Because yep. if you have it, uh, it, to be honest, like if you're within a hundred dollars, it starts being making the other versions kind of seem useless. You know, like like if they launched a Switch Plus and it was only fifty dollars more than the base Switch, why does the base Switch exist? Um, yeah. like why would that even be a thing? So. You would need that to be like 250 and the the light to be 150. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm seeing comments on the potential length for this podcast. I don't think we're going to hit four hours. I think we're, we're pretty no, much near the pretty end here. Done. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting to see how things happen. I, I, I guess, like, as, like, you know, someone who tries to analyze Nintendo, this year I'm starting to, to become more uh i guess excited about covering nintendo this way because they're unpredictable which makes the discussions a little bit more interesting because it's not like oh well nintendo's done this every single year so this is what's happening we don't know what in the world they're gonna do <laughs> you know it might be partner showcases for the rest of the year and that's it it might be partner showcases and there's a couple like trailer drops we might go into the last week of october and be like, oh, there's nothing in November. And then until it's like, ah, no, no, we were just kidding. Here's Skyward Sword HD. And it has a gruesome <laughs> epilogue story. You're welcome. You know, uh, like, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, but either way, uh, at least we have the 3D All-Stars compilation coming out less than two weeks from now. Like, that was unexpected. And I know... Not everyone has like varying degrees of like excitement about this but me personally mario the 3d mario games are like one of the that's like my jam like that 3d zelda and metro prime are like my favorite things so having all three enhanced on my switch i'm gonna 100 percent all of these before before pikmin 3 deluxe so well maybe that's yeah. a lot but i'm gonna try it's gonna be fun <laughs> Yeah, Galaxy might take you a while, but 64 and Sunshine, hey, it could do that in like two days. Well, apparently there's there's like red coin levels that I didn't know about, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah three days then. Yeah. Uh, and until then, I'm going to try and finish Xenoblade, so I'll probably try mm -hmm. and stream that soon. I've been working more lately, but once my, my, my work schedule sort of gets back to normal... I'll probably try and stream on Twitch a little bit more. So yeah, guys, check me out there. Uh, if you, if you want to see me stream more, let me know. I might stream Xenoblade or or finish. I might stream myself finishing Paper Mario. I'm off Tuesday and Thursday this week, so I might stream then. Like, I just want to know that people actually want to watch those because I know a lot of that content is spoiler content, and I don't want to do a stream where there's like two viewers. You know, <laughs> like I'm good. I'll just play the game normally. You just try so and let see me know I, on my Discord. At me on my Discord if you want to see that. Maybe I'll make a poll or something. If I get enough votes, I'll do it. Yep. Shifty, you any plans Oops. with your social media? Uh, social media, not so much, but I definitely plan on uh, streaming a lot more. Uh, I haven't really gone to Twitch yet, so I mostly just stream on my uh, YouTube channel. 
So, you know, check that out. I usually stream Super Smash Brothers. So if you like seeing Smash content and that sort of thing, check, you know, check myself out. I also did a reaction video to the 3D All-Stars uh, and Mario Direct. So if you're interested in my genuine reaction, there's that too. So, yep. And it's all uh, their YouTube channels are linked in the description below, guys. So make sure to check that out. Um, leave a like on the podcast. That'd be nice. Uh, it helps other people see it. But uh, yeah, that that that's pretty much it for now. Um, I guess we'll see what happens this week if Nintendo really just want to kind of continue like that one announcement per week thing. We'll see how long this lasts. But yeah, I'm, I'm good for now. That Mario Direct will hold me over for a little bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think so. Take care, guys. See ya. Bye, guys. See ya.